Hello and welcome to session 19 of Outlander's Guide to Ladaria. Hi guys! Hello! Hello! Hello. <coughs> there was this beautiful competition that just took place off stream. <laughs> and uh, who, who won? No one. Competition implies <laughs> challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Dang! <laughs> Oof. Okay. All right, well, <laughs> with that out of the way, how are you doing? Everything good? Yeah. I am amazing. Nice. We have we have a few um <coughs> morning voices today. Uh we'll play, we're playing earlier than usual <coughs> in the middle of the week, which is exciting. Uh <coughs> I already start starting with the jabs of the gnomes. Uh Matt. <laughs> Uh, today's, uh, your recap day. Oh, no! Oh, whatever will I do? Oh, that's okay, I have something prepared for just such an occasion. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Let me go to Discord. Any jabs on gnomes are punching down. Ah. Uh, not for me. <laughs> 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 Uh, will this be streamed on, on Discord? Screen shared on Discord? Yeah. To be. Okay. Let me prepare that. <clears throat> da, da, da. Uh. Hide this. And reveal this. Do we need music? Yes, please. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh. We came back. It did. <laughs> And, 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 and everyone's animated. Nice. Hey, 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 I'm, I'm not reusing assets. You're reusing assets. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I even made a custom one for Mikel. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, uh, I, I guess I'll get started and then let's play. Uh, we have something that we want to do before to buy time. No? Okay, I'll get started. Uh, Show us. Uh, so our session began last time uh, with the group leaving the river, which is cave, uh, taking the provided ice path to the shore outside before it melted away. Um, the group then decided to work on the raft, uh, or decided that the work on the raft needed to be finished, rather, to accommodate faster travel to Arya. Uh, as Talix and Tekka left to finish the work, we were all stopped by Raquel. Um, she asked about the significance of the Crystal Castle, um, to the group, uh, referring to the item that Talix left to the witch in exchange for her memories, um, and nobody in the party seemed to know anything about it and just assumed it was a decoration or piece of art or something, um, something pretty. Um, turns out that's not the case. Raquel went on to educate that the Crystal Castle was in fact a replica of a real Crystal Castle of great importance to the Ladarians, and that the Zasberg Peninsula as we know it was in fact a very small portion of Ladaria as a whole. Um, she spoke of secrets that the Ladarians have to keep from the outsiders, things that, quote-unquote, they believe are so different from our viewpoint of, uh, from the viewpoint of outsiders that the sharing of certain information could prove harmful. Um, she revealed that the Zosberg Peninsula is where the outcasts were sent, and she told us that the true heart of Ladaria lies far to the west beyond any drawn maps that we have, and that the castle is in those lands. Um, specifically mentioning that if we follow the southern shore, it would lead us to it. Um, after some very specific directions regarding rivers, meeting seas, and some cardinal directions and roads and stuff to meet Castle, uh, Raquel spoke to Tekka about curses not existing in nature, and this is referring to tieflings um, as, as we know them in-game, uh, and that tieflings are in fact cursed, and that there is someone causing it on purpose. Um, that tieflings can't be natural. Um, then Raquel remembered uh, suddenly that the payment to the witch for removing her memories was actually her own body. Uh, she exchanged her beautiful self for the revolting form of the witch, and in the process, she seemed to have gained access to some kind of elemental magic innate to the witch's body. Um, using this, she began to bless each party member with a magical life jacket to save us, <laughs> should we be drawn into the sea. Uh, something that's apparently taboo and dangerous for uh, reasons. 
Uh, Raquella then hobbled off into the distance, leaving the party to their own devices. Um, we then spent the next few hours coming up with some magical, mundane, and vaguely scientific ways to make a functioning raft. And after building one up to our lofty standards, we set off down the river. It's us! Yay! Uh, the group discussed the upcoming holidays <laughs> and further delved in just how stupidly old the frogman is. Um, he predates every tree in this area. Uh, some history of Vakanas' life, death, and rebirth was explained to the less devoured or the more forward members of the group. Um, and then some magic items are identified, uh, most specifically the magic pebble that Pontifex found and gifted to Pip and that he totally doesn't want to ungift. Um, <laughs> And the, the rock was exhibiting signs of magic that wasn't arcane or divine and didn't fall into any categories of schools of magic in the known world. Um, this resulted in a strange argument between the professor wanting to study it and Pip wanting it for not... for no good reason. <laughs> <laughs> After Pip gave his word, a proper binding promise uh, to research it himself and give punctual weekly reports on his findings uh, lest he bleed from the eyes, the professor happily relented, uh, ecstatic to have such a young soul be equally as committed to the professor's scholarly pursuits. Uh, the snow globe was also identified, and it had some sort of, like, mini magic on it, miniaturization magic, and aside from learning that she's real, the snow globe was a trap that she probably triggered on accident, uh, not much else was discovered, but the rock was really cool. Uh, Riding down the raft, uh, down the river for a few days, we only occasionally stopped for food and pee breaks. Uh, we met a Yavelsi merchant uh, with a fuzzy elk-like friend. Um, he waved us down emphatically like he knew someone, and we did some shopping while Pip made moose noises at the cute animal named Tokeke. Uh, after some confusion regarding buy and buy, we <laughs> traded coin and child hair for some appreciated supplies, including a tent and a blanket made out of shiny rain-repellent Ladarian cloth. Um, a sack full of uplu and a mason jar of the devil's turmeric. <laughs> uh, after our shopping spree, we resumed our journey down the river. Uh, we dripped for a while longer when we were suddenly attacked in the middle of the night by a ridiculously large censorship bar. Or, uh, <laughs> I mean, an incredibly dense mechanical crab uh, that went straight for the journal, which is held by tech. And combat ensued with the crab <laughs> tilting the boat constantly. Um, as the fight continued and lives were in peril, Jamuel's lifted high into the air to avoid capture with an absolutely genius, I put that in all caps, mage hand <laughs> tactic by the master wizard player at the table who carried this encounter on his back with that mage hand. Uh, unfortunately, this did not seem to actually accomplish anything or draw the crab's attention. Uh, and it continued attacking and beat the hell out of uh, Pip and Talix and Tekka and Brooke and, and everyone but the tactical genius. Uh, it was then joined by two more mechanical crabs and the raft became a nautical seesaw while Tekka worked to beach the boat as soon as possible. Uh, eventually the crabs succumbed to the catapulted crab arms, the radiant katanas, kung fu, and dubstep. Uh, just as Lord Gygax <laughs> intended, but not before our <laughs> glorious leader Squish Kostarox Jr. fell to his wounds. Um, we gathered on the shore and talked to Jamuel uh, about what happened as Pip gathered the crab remains, uh, Tekka saved the boat, and Talix healed the group with a ten-minute prayer. Uh, <laughs> a saddened and muted Pip was generally consoled by the party, talking of ways to bring Squeak back, and Jamuel told us of his newly developed fear of heights, uh, lack of naval exploration and flexing his weirdly sensitive nose. <laughs> um, the party additionally came up with some possible ties to the machines in the Plernan Pantheon, which is spooky, but nothing set in stone. Uh, we then continued on through the night, and eventually our lazy river trip came to an end with us leaving the raft on the shore as we set off on the last leg of our journey to Aria. Uh, apparently close enough to arrive before nightfall. Uh, slowly, uh, Arya came into sight on the horizon, as well as us encountering a group of what I think were some kind of magical hummingbirds. Um, and then as we ventured closer, the birds noticed us and peaced out, um, and they fled towards the town, uh, with Pip overhearing them crying out the word, Warn. Um, we then sat there and talked about that for a minute, uh, and 
and then we were met with a big leaf flying through the air. Um, no one else seemed to think this was strange, honestly. It's just a leaf on the wind. Uh, except for Talix. Um, he then snatched it out of the air. He recognizes this as some kind of clerical spell. Um, and he read the message inscribed on it. Hide. Nice. Uh, <laughs> and then Talix like, ah, oh, we gotta go. Now. And we did. In the same session. Amazing. Oh, wait, no, we didn't. And then we ended. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Good job. Nice. Beautiful. (laughs) I had this prepared in case I didn't prepare a recap. (laughs) (laughs) How? You had one in reserve. Oh. 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 Okay, Ah. I. I understand now why there was a random inspiration die um, lying around. It's it's mine. It was the one that I that I cloned uh-huh. to give to people. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Here you go. Uh... <clears throat> Thank you for the recap. Sprite inspiration. That was my old. <coughs> <coughs> okay. There you go. Uh, I need to apologize because, like, towards the end of that, uh, I failed to drink water properly. <clears throat> and I, uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> I'm gonna feel that for the next five minutes. <clears throat> yeah, I actually didn't think about having to talk for that long uninterrupted, uh, <laughs> so, so soon. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um,. Here. We left off with uh, uh, Talix snatching the leaf out of the air and uh, reading the word and telling everyone else that uh, you guys need to go. So what would you like to do? So, we go. Yeah, it's... But go uh, where? Is there like some tree cover nearby? Anything like that? <clears throat> um... <laughs> there is, you'd have to, um, alright, the direction you guys just came from uh, is over here. Uh, oh yeah, you've passed some, so you just have to, like, turn around and go right back to the northwest. Not all the way to the river, um, mm-hmm. but, and maybe a little bit more north than, than west. But yeah, there is, uh, uh, on these hills, <clears throat> there are very just sparse yeah. trees uh but that way you'd find like the most dense cover available I think, well i mean it, is this like a miles journey i think talix just wants to find some immediate cover first and maybe circle around the town and and see uh what he can perceive the most <clears throat> immediate cover available uh would be either a single tree that's like just within like you know uh, 20 seconds of running distance or you could uh, uh, take a minute and sort of like go over the uh, top of the hill you're currently on and like on the odds other side so it would be like <clears throat> you'd actually take advantage of the verticality to be like yep. out of sight si- out of direct line of sight from the colony yeah let's do that first and salix is going to try to lead people that way all right as long as they want to come along Okay. I've learned there are three things that you don't ask questions about. It's run, duck, and hide. <laughs> uh, I'm going to take a stealth check from everybody. Okay. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you're wearing armor. Uh, good on. luck, everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> you disadvantage on that, don't you? Yeah, disadvantage at minus three. And I rolled terribly. Uh, me too. <laughs> okay, let's go. Come on, hey. negative number. Hey, got Brooke! You. We got a couple good ones. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Okay, everyone follows... Talix <laughs> swallows a bird and starts coughing. <laughs> <laughs> that... No! <laughs> and Pip cries it's out, knowing what the bird is saying inside. <laughs> <laughs> Let me out! <laughs> Not like this! <laughs> okay. You all follow Talix's lead as he just turns right around, almost exactly in the direction you just came from, and runs. 
and you all follow and you like duck behind where the train just reaches like its peak and you get right past it. <laughs> Runs, quote unquote. <clears throat> uh, it's, as it's getting dark, it's getting a little harder to see where you're, where you're stepping. Uh, so there's a couple of tumbles on the way, but ultimately you all make it there and you just lie low. Uh, how long would you like to be here? Uh, just for the immediate time, uh, Talisuna addressed the group. Okay, this is what I found. Uh, this Riven. is a message from someone named Inwild Twilight Sun. Kizuna. Hey, yourself. <laughs> what? Who? Uh, Talus will show you the leaf. Yeah, I can read the leaf, but uh, who? Enwald Twilight Sun. He's a very powerful cleric. He's, uh... Well, yeah, he's... <laughs> probably the most powerful cleric in Ladaria. Of... Uh, I came here to meet with him, and... Well... You know, uh... Receive some payment, and... Maybe... Uh, get some updates on my current my current mission, but well, really, I have no idea what's going on. Ah, uh, if this person is warning others, are they not in trouble? It could have just been for me. Not many people would know to look for this. If this person is as powerful as Talek says, eh, we would not be of any help, we would just be in the way. I just want to figure out what's going on before anything else. Sure do miss uh, Squeak right about now. Mm -hmm. Pip is calling out to any bird that may be nearby, asking for for help. Roll an animal handling and check. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Uh, let me look at this. Oh. Uh, you hear an owl in the distance. <clears throat> uh, Hooven. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, after a few seconds, uh, um, one approaches. Uh, this is a, an older bird. You can see some, uh, it has, uh, it's missing one eye, uh, it has a lot of scars from uh, previous uh, fights and whatnot, but uh, um, as, it, as it arrives, it just kind of lands, uh, it lands straight on your head, Pip, uh, and you can feel just its talons are like massive and they're strong, <laughs> but, uh, and it, it feels like if you were to just <laughs> say the wrong thing, it, it could just easily <laughs> just <laughs> crush your skull. Pip and will carefully switch dialects into more of an owl sounding bird. <laughs> Be like, oh, 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 oh. Uh, um, he hello. Uh, you see the head of the owl just. Uh, the owl leans forward, and so you just see the head like upside down, uh, like in front of your forehead. Uh, and you have to look straight up to see it. Uh, and uh, he asks, What is it that you need? Oh, oh, oh. There's something going on in the town. Do you think maybe you could help us? Um, <clears throat> the owl turns its head like almost all the way 180 degrees, then back, pauses. What do you offer? Um, we could help you get food. 
or whatever else you need. Uh, and Pip is going to try and cast Beast Bond. Uh, since he is touching this owl. Let me read on that. Beast Bond. You establish a telepathic link with one beast you touch that is friendly to you or charmed by you. Okay. Um, Pip, you can feel your, your spell taking hold. Um, although the, the owl doesn't move and seems to still be thinking about this. And uh, you feel its talons just squeezing just ever so slightly, a little bit harder. As it says, I can get my own food. Uh... Is there something else you might have need of that we could help you with? Whatever's going on in the town might be scaring away some of your prey. Oh. Huh. Roll a persuasion check. Uh, I do it with advantage. Okay. Ugh. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was cocked. It looked like that 14 was on a 5. <laughs> okay. Um, the owl considers uh, uh, your, your, your statement and then, uh, um, and then says, It would be bad if there was no more prey for me. And then he takes flight. Okay. <clears throat> And telepathically, with Beast Bond, Pip can communicate back and forth with this animal. Mm -hmm. There is no maximum range. No, as long as we are within line of sight of each other. So as long as I can see it. Okay. Uh, the rest of you just saw an owl landing on Pip's head. The two of them seemingly conversing for a bit. And then the owl takes flight. And Pip, like, goes, uh, just, just, <clears throat> he drags himself just a few feet up the hill. Uh, so you can see down uh, uh, towards the colony, towards Aria. Uh, this, this owl helping us. Uh, Talix, you hear in your mind mm. since you're the one with the stone. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, uh, hold on. He's, he's flying to take a better look. Tell really that. Okay. Fine. Next, I need um, a perception roll. Um, hmm. Okay. This is done with the owl's senses, but it's like Pip looking for things, right? Um. Um. I mean, Pip. Pip can be looking too, but he's really like. He can't see through the owl, so he's oh, really he just relying on what the owl says. Yeah, that's right. So I'll just roll for the owl. Eh. Do owls have advantage on perception? They do. Oh, nice. <laughs> uh, Tekka, in case this goes badly, uh, perhaps it is best if you hold on to this. If things go south, leave with Jemiel. Fine. I'll keep Jamil safe. Okay. Um. Pip. Through the telepath telepathic link, uh, <clears throat> uh, the owl reports that uh, it sees uh, the town built on the two sides of the river, uh, and. Uh, Nothing about it seems different from what the owl is used to. Do you have any particular questions for the owl? Anything that he should be looking for? I, I think that Pip would uh, quickly ask Talix first. 
Uh, is there anything? Is there anything he can be looking for in, in particular? I wish I knew. Of just have him have him look at the temple. I suppose. Could Say you what he try sees to there. fly by the temple? The building with the big spire? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> um, <laughs> it is, uh, and Talix will be able to, to, to tell this to, to Pip and then, and then through Pip to the owl. Uh, it's the largest building in a colony. It's also on the highest hill that the colony is built on and around. Um, so the owl can easily identify which building you're, you're, you're talking about. And... Uh, reports that it is there it is undamaged um there is there are some people in the town most of them are uh are retiring for the day and there is just a little bit of like motion of people leaving the temple perhaps you can send your elf friend to find this uh, powerful cleric is one like Talex, I assume he has the possibility of speaking to animals as well. This Maybe it can relay a message. Maybe. There doesn't seem to be anything going wrong. Well, it's possible. Let's see. Uh... Do any of you carry a cloak of some kind? Always. Oh, well, <laughs> an extra one. It is not necessarily needed. Uh, I have. Oh, I have. Uh, <laughs> pull out the sequined rope. <laughs> oh. It's sort of cloaky, but. Uh... Uh, it's sort of doing the opposite of what I want, really. <laughs> <laughs> I could always swap them out. <laughs> you take mine, and I could wear this. <laughs> Would you really, Professor? Uh, yes. Why? Oh. Is this oh, okay. not my style? Uh, it's not what I would imagine, <laughs> but uh, certainly. Really? If anyone okay. could be practically invisible while sweating this thing, it would be me. <laughs> <laughs> like a snake in the grass, I am. And he chuckles. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, let's try it. Uh, the only thing I can guess is that I shouldn't. I shouldn't be seen here. In that. Perhaps if we draw their attention away from me with a, a flamboyant professor. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, professor. Of course, I may get to live out my childhood dream of becoming a tap dancer after all. <laughs> <laughs> what and... should I tell Mortimer the <laughs> Third? Um... <laughs> <laughs> uh, job well done. Here, uh... I don't have any mice on me, uh... Me neither. Oh. Hmm. How do birds feel about Uplu? An owl spice. <laughs> not so nice. Is it dark, by the way? It's, uh, by now, yes. People. Yes, it is. Hmm. Um, what about the I don't know, I guess Uplu? Talix will look for some dried meat or something among his rations. Oh, it might take offense to that. <laughs> there is meat in your rations, like dried meat. Mortimer well, is us... on a wet food diet. <laughs> <laughs> Talus will just hold it up, kind of looking puzzled at Pip. <laughs> okay. Uh... Hold some jerky up to the to the owl and see. If how it reacts. <laughs> okay, so you don't need the owl to look for anything else? You're not looking for... Oh, if, uh, I mean... You good? I, yeah, I guess well, I mean... so. Like, the, the owl can't, like, go into 
any buildings I'm, are out of Pip's sight, so he's it's pretty limited. Yeah, I'm not sure how realistic it would be to expect him to be able to just find yeah. Animal Twilight Sun in that in that big colony. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. And know who yeah, he Pip is. will call Mortimer back. Alright. Morti- Mortimer the uh, third eventually returns. Uh, um the the way it flies is just completely silent. Some of you don't even see it and suddenly it's just back on Pips's head. Uh, Pip would say to him, Thank you so much. Um, it's not much, but Talix has an offering for you. If you choose to accept it, Mortimer. <laughs> Lord Mortimer. Uh, Talix is holding up the jerky, and uh, mm-hmm. um, the owl takes flight again and snatches it out of Talix's hand. Uh, you, you feel its talons, its claws just scraping against your hand and leaving a bit of a scratch, and then it, he flies off. Oh. I told you. Wasn't very nice. I warned you. Okay. I forget that look that. Uh, I can manage. I mean, they're not the most hygienic. (laughs) Professor, (laughs) you've seen me heal (laughs) grievous wounds (laughs) in an instant. (laughs) You know, one is a wound and one is rabies. (laughs) Well, if it is, I can handle it. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. (laughs) <laughs> I think he's like side eyeing you suspiciously. There's like not even any blood drawn. It's just like... <laughs> there are just some things that you shouldn't play with. <laughs> ah, okay. Was one Wait, of them. Are, are you suspicious of owls? Is, is this like no? You're for you? suspicious of owls. That's certainly not true. Um, but I just took about. Uh... Uh, this took about 10 minutes uh, or so uh, since uh, since the time when you spotted the leaf and decided to hide behind the top of this one hill. Uh, and I need a perception check from, every- from everybody. Oh no. Clearly, My least yeah, favorite sentence. The professor sentence. did look nervous around the hill. Dang. Yeah, okay. Uh, between Pip and Tekka and Talix uh, keeping a, uh, keeping an eye out for, for any movement, anything suspicious, uh, you all spot almost simultaneously uh, another leaf that at first seems just like any other, but then the, just the patterns uh, in which it flies feel unnatural and like it's coming in a straight line towards the spot where uh, Talix caught the first one. And then he just sort of like stays there without ever landing on the grass. Talix will take it. <clears throat> you have to leave your cover to go get it. Um. Uh, professor, your cloak. Uh, oh yes. Uh, and he'll he'll take off his cloak and give it to Talix, and he's gonna go into the process of turning this uh, sequin thing into like a shimog. <clears throat> okay. All right, Talos will just throw it over himself, pulls pull the hood up, and check the leaf. So you have the the, the blue cloak. <laughs> yeah. The one that. Yeah. Oh, all right. It smells like old man. Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Let me <clears throat> check your rolls again. Okay. Uh, Talix, you, may, you make your way to the spot really quickly, grab the leaf, and you don't even really just go all the way back before um, uh, before reading it. And uh, uh, once you're back with the others, you turn the, fle- the leaf over, and all it says is, wait. Okay. Um... <clears throat> Talix is gonna look around. We're we're by a tree, right? <clears throat> yeah. Um, you you picked the two the, the 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 hill as a hiding spot, yeah, so the tree is actually a bit further. Okay. Is there a tree nearby? Yeah, sure, sure. You can get to it. Uh, 
He'll run up and pluck a, a sizable leaf from anything. There's like a a maple around or something. Anything with a decent sized leaf. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'll, you'll find one. Okay. He'll take out his quill and just write disguise, I guess. And <clears throat> and um, he'll write that and just throw the leaf into the wind and it will uh, take off and head to the temple. <clears throat> okay. And he'll uh, <clears throat> just keep that, like, concentrate on that for a bit and return to the others. Uh, it's going to be... It's going to be, uh... About... Um... About the... Uh, 15 more minutes. Um... Alright, alright, sorry. In order. Um... After a few minutes, as you carefully lead uh, the leaf uh, down the hill into the the, the the temple, you can barely see, and on, and uh, uh, you aim for a particular uh, window that you know to be there uh, that will lead straight to where um, to um, to where Enwild would be. Uh, he has like a little office thing that's on the side of the temple, uh, and you can you know that. that window is open you can feel your spell coming to an end as the leaf is uh, uh, no longer flying and then eventually as you wait and you and you watch uh, there is another leaf coming your way you make sure to grab it before uh, uh, a gust of wind too strong for it to takes it away and the word on it is stay <clears throat> well, it's certainly Enwild. He seems to think... You know what? The rest of you could go on without me. <clears throat> Does he only yeah. want you to stay or what? It's hard to know uh, for sure, but... I think so. It is someone looking for you, they likely know who I am. So perhaps it is best I stay with you. Okay. That makes sense. But the rest of you... Uh, if you could go into town and maybe see what's going on around the temple and... Well... If everything's okay... Then I should hear back one way or another from you or from Minwald. But otherwise, okay. maybe you could help out. <clears throat> uh, Pip, how long of a distance does your little rock brick work? Uh, Talix hears in his head. <laughs> um, I'm not sure, but I think pretty far. Oh. If that is the case, then uh, perhaps it is, this isn't a bad idea. So just check out what is going on in the town. Anything else? Um. Tell you what. Well, go to the temple. And yeah, try to figure out what's going on. If, if there's ever an emergency... Here, I'll give you this. And Talos will give them another leaf. And, uh... If, if you need us, just destroy it. Alright. It'll work for about an hour. <laughs> oh. I'll try to concentrate uh, on it. That's this. good to know. <laughs> Otherwise, uh... Hopefully you've found out something by then, right? We'll try. If not, can you send him another leaf? 
Oh yeah, I could do that. Of course. I suppose when the leaf you have becomes inactive, reconvene to a known location and another is on its way. Yeah, just, uh... I'll be sending it to the temple if need be. But hopefully we'll know something by then. We all together on this? <laughs> yes. Oh, I can definitely check it out. <clears throat> okay. Um, Hip will uh, wordlessly just cast disguise self to make himself look like a like a chubby schoolboy um, and sort of <laughs> like a just a, a neat little uniform. And then he nods. Dennis, were you about to say something? Mm, no. Just that he was taking the leaf. Okay. So it is uh, Brook and Pip and Tekka who are going down to the colony. I believe so. Alright. And Brook is in possession of the leaf. Okay. Alright. Then you head off. Uh, like the like the rest of the journey ever since you left the river behind, um, it is a pretty easy walk. Uh, uh, with the only problem being that uh, um, it's it's dark by now, which I believe is an issue for uh, Brooke. Um, so it's just a little bit slower to actually go down the hill and make sure you don't like start tumbling down. But you can see the lights uh, of the colony in the distance, so it's uh, uh, pretty easy to orient uh, yourself and just uh, um, eventually arrive to it. It just so happens uh, that... Uh, um, well, all right, so Arya is built uh, on two sides uh, of uh, uh, a river, both sides. And uh, um, you're arriving from the highest point that the colony is built uh, onto, which happens to be also where the temple is. So you're kind of approaching uh, uh, that uh, first. But there is a, a um, on the northern, on the northern, on the northern side of the colony, uh, there is actually a wooden wall that surrounds it, and there is uh, a gate that you'd have to go through. Um, so are you taking just the direct way in? Unless something looks too sp suspicious. I think so. Suspicious. I don't know, does anything seem off? I say while well, not being able to see anything. <laughs> Does anything feel off? <laughs> well, by the time you arrive at the, at the wall, uh, there's plenty of lighting around. Uh, Jamil is in Tekka's possession. Um, the the gate, uh, which is more like this, this large wooden, just uh, straight up door um, built into this wooden wall, uh, is open. There's just guards stationed on both sides, which feels... Uh, does not feel unusual to Brook. Uh, such a large colony is uh, a wall, some kind of defenses. That's to be expected. All right. Then yeah, gone straight. You okay. And as you come over, one of the guards holds up a hand, takes a quick look at all of, all of your faces, then gestures. For you to proceed and says welcome to aria <clears throat> brook nods and moves on uh, get it they keep getting bigger come on come on come on come on come on yeah. come on there's so much this, oh, is, wow. there we this go. is the biggest one, right? Oh yeah, by far. The first and biggest. Okay. You're arriving from uh, this direction. Uh, here is how the colony is oriented. North. Wow. South. <gasps> so again, where are we from? Um, from Pontifex's side of the table. So imagine that, you know, the colony extends past uh, uh, what I've built here. 
Um, so the wall will be like somewhere around over here and then you go through the streets of Aria. Um, a little bit uphill until we reach the highest uh, spot on the hill that is built on and around. Um, and where the uh, distinctive and massive shape of a temple of uh, the Jade Church is built. Um, there's plenty of lanterns hanging um, around the main entrance. You have to pass sort of like under this, this arched uh, wall in order to actually reach the building and go in. Uh, but it does appear to be... Um, it does appear to be accessible and uh, uh, open. Any people around? Not uh, outside. All but right, the, the, just... the main door is open and inside you can see some movement. Huh. So we're just going in? I'll <clears> ask <throat> the other two. Mm -hmm. uh, Pip, Pip will like adjust himself and though he's, he has this illusion placed upon him, he's going to uh, make sure that the uh, the amulet of the fox is still visible. All right. All right. We're going inside. Okay. The Wait, what's the guy's name again? Jason? In Will the Twilight Sun. Oh, yeah. In the... Of course. Of course. Here, let me... Oh, okay, he got it before me. Uh, this temple, compared to the one in Vera, uh, is far bigger and yet simultaneously less... Um, less... <laughs> opulent, yes. Exactly the word. Um, so you're, you're, um, there is no like crazy golden decorations, but it is far bigger and appears to have multiple areas that you can go in. The first one that you step into is this kind of what you would you would have expected. This just large uh, room where um, mass seems to uh, occasionally take place, and there's a bunch, there's rows of benches that lead up to an altar. But you can see these large openings, um, like. Doorways, but there's no door. It's just this large arc uh, where you can go on the right and on the left. They seem to lead to other open areas. Um, inside, uh, at this hour, there's only a couple people sitting on the benches and on the altar, um, standing, uh, um, not really sitting down. It's on one of the side benches, but on the altar portion of, of the temple. Um, so we're Normal people wouldn't go, usually only the priests would go. Uh, there is a a man um, that kind of catches your attention for how different he looks. Uh, he's exceptionally pale, really, really tall and really, really thin. Uh, like there is barely any muscle on him. Uh, his hair is white and wavy, not too long, but... Um, just, just a few inches long, and it seems to stick a little bit upward. Um, he's currently reading a book, and I need Brooke to roll a religion check. I'm on the wrong side. Okay. Uh, that's it. <laughs> oh. uh. We didn't ask how he looks, right? Hmm. No. Have we slept since a uh, crap attack? 
Yeah, it's been a few days since the <laughs> crab attack. <clears throat> oh, Not hey. so much seems to be going on here. Should we maybe wait like a few minutes to see if something happens? Someone asks us <laughs> what is... Someone asks us what we're doing here. Pip, you're pretending to be sick and needing to be healed, okay? <laughs> so sick, yeah. <clears throat> All right. Everyone did look not suspicious. <laughs> Everyone looked not suspicious. Don't look suspicious. But also sick. <laughs> Would you like would you like me to voice sack to the part of you coughing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alright, I'll just leave my mic unmuted for a bit and see what comes up. <laughs> okay, what do you do? Uh just take a seat somewhere and see if something happens. Pip like would. Time span of five to ten minutes. Pip would uh think to Talix. Nothing seems to be going on inside the temple either. Now, I think this is the same deal as Pontifex's thing. I can't respond, right? Nope. All right. Okay. I'll just I'll just pass that along to the professor. I haven't found anything out. Every step is progress. Tekka steps forward to the man. Uh -oh. All right, um, you approach the altar, and by the time you're at directly in front of it, the man uh, lifts his head. You can see that his eyes have no pupils. Uh, you almost see no iris either, but it's just a very, very light shade of blue. Um, he looks up. He he looks um, uh, a little bit on, on the older side of things, particularly because of his hair, but you can also just see it on his face. Uh, but it doesn't seem... Uh, well, first of all, nowhere near as old as Pontifex, uh, uh, and it seems to still be uh, particularly full of uh, um, energy still, as he uh, slams the book shut and uh, stands up and looks at you just up and down. Um, can I have an inside check from you, Tekka? All right. Wait, that's a natural one? It's a natural one? Oh, it's your second one in the entire campaign! <laughs> okay. Um, I'm winning. <laughs> yes, Austin is winning. Um, you... <laughs> Naturally, Dennis is in, the, is in last place. <laughs> <laughs> or first. Uh, you just unflinchingly hold his gaze. Uh, the silence feels like it's lasting a little bit too long, and it seems he's just waiting for you to speak. It is my first visit to Arya. Can you explain this place, its purpose? After a brief pause, uh, um... He doesn't really smile, he seems to have one of those faces that uh, uh, just ca has uh, um, a constant, uh, serious uh, expression to it. Um, but after a, br a brief silence, he does like sort of gestures, um, and, like the whole thing, uh, and says, And it is my first time seeing one of your kind. Welcome to Arya. Uh, allow me to explain. And, um, or. He begins by pointing at a statue uh, that is directly behind him on the back of the altar uh, that is uh, of uh, an opossum, um, which is an animal that also exists on the Darius, so Tekka would be able to, um, would know what it is. And he says, this is the church of the opossum. It is a temple dedicated to one of our gods, the ones 
from Plurna. And like, pauses for a moment, looks back at Tekka, uh, and then just looks back at the statue and continues. We bring the worship of our gods on this land as well. It is a place of faith, of healing, of progress. Progress. Do you do work here? Do you develop? He crosses his arms and says, I sure hope they do. All the funding that goes towards this church would be misplaced otherwise. And he sort of like does this dismissive gesture and says, but yes, plenty of work is done here. Do you help the wounded and ill? Those of us with a magical talent, given to us by our gods, are capable of such feats. Are they sleeping for the night? Or is one present? I do believe that... Uh, one of them should still be awake. It is too early for sleep. And he points at one of the two uh, large archways and says, I can take you to him. Not now. Thank you for your answers. Um, he he pauses and looks again at Tekka just up and down and, and says, Then again, I'm not sure if whatever is afflicting you could even be cured in the first place. Tekka gives a quick scowl before walking away from the conversation. Okay. Um, as you turn around and go back towards where Brook and Paper sitting, uh, uh, the two of them can see that he just follows him with his, with his gaze. What did you say to him? Not much. I tried starting conversation, but there was not much to learn. Well, he seems interested. He has been looking you down ever since you left. Or looking at you, rather. I am not surprised. So, do we mention a name, or do we continue waiting? I mean, I don't know who we would mention it for. Or who we would mention it to, right? If something is actually going on, and we say it to the wrong person? That could be bad. Hmm. Sitting here in silence is also bad. Oh, well, but be seeing and waiting if something is going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> or we ask for a clerk. Heal that poor child. <laughs> <laughs> alright, alright. You think the guy you just talked to could lead us to him? Yes. All right, he stands up and goes to the person with Pip. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, hello? Uh, 
Um, he hasn't gone back to to sitting um, oh. after the conversation, so yeah, he just sees you approach. Uh, um, glances at the two of you. Can I have an inside check from the two of you as well? Four. Okay. He gives a brief glance at the two of you, seems to um, pause for a little bit longer on on Pip, and then look back uh, at Tekka, Brooke, back to Pip again. And uh, <clears throat> his expression doesn't really change at all, he still seems uh, uh, as serious as it was before. Um, arms still crossed, his stance is very, um, he is very straight back. Uh, um, there's just this, this manner that he carries himself that seems uh, um, like he is a man of importance and uh, he shows it a lot. Um, and after, yeah, after you, you say hello to him, uh, he brings his attention to Brooke and then gestures towards Pip uh, and says, Do he need assistance? <laughs> yeah, he does. Uh... He's been having this really big cough, as you can hear, and that hasn't gone away. <coughs> Say no more. I'll go, I'll go get the man who is supposed to take care of these things. Who are you getting? Um, he pauses for a moment, like he's like, um, almost reconsidering, but then he just, um... Sixteen. Okay. Ah, and then he says, "The man in charge of this church uh, is Twilight Sun. He oh. should be dealing with issues such as this one." Well, I'm excited to meet Mr. or Sir Twilight Sun. If I may ask before I go. Um, any gestures to his pip? Where is his family? Um. <laughs> ah. Dead. <laughs> At least from what he has been telling me. Oh my god. <laughs> Uh, what did you say, Dennis? Poor Pip. Dead. <laughs> I just interpreted the sound. <laughs> you say dead? Yeah. Uh, he looks back at you. You're his caretaker? For now. We've been traveling for a while. Yeah, he still has, like, grandparents. Um, but they're a bit up far a one. <laughs> Grandparent. <laughs> um, but she can't really travel, so <clears throat> I'm taking care of that at the moment. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, Brooke, this this man for being uh, tall, you know, he's nowhere near as tall as you are. Uh, so he looks up at you, but it, it something about his presence uh, it still makes. Um, still makes you feel almost uh, uh, smaller, as he says. For a child to be traveling with a phantom, uh, that sounds like a terrible idea. Well, you're not putting him in danger, are you? I'm keeping him out of danger. That's what I'm being paid for, right? Normally, I'd say that uh, at least he has the protection of the fox, but... And he just shakes his head and uh, uh, says, Wait here, I'll get him. And he steps down from the altar and takes the, the door um, to the right compared to the entrance. Not the door, the archway. 
All right, can I turn to Pip quickly? Yeah? Pip, Pip, did you want me to say that your parents are dead? Pip holds up his hand for a high five. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> he gives him the high five. <laughs> Quietly. Quiet high five. Okay, you're just waiting for him to come back? Yeah. Uh, Talix, you hear in your mind, they're none the wiser. Okay. Uh, he told me something and I have no idea what he means by it. <laughs> what did he say? Hello? <laughs> <laughs> what, what did he say? <laughs> I said, what did he say? Oh, uh, they're... Uh, they're none the wiser. Somehow I am more concerned. Yeah, that sounds bad, doesn't it? <laughs> it, it sounds are like they, they are they're taking this in a different direction than previously <laughs> anticipated. <laughs> Listen, I was pressured into doing something. <laughs> There's <laughs> not a damn thing we can do about it. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> he had his perspiration hands out. There was nothing I could do. If I sent another leaf, that would actually mean they couldn't mess. They couldn't signal me. Hmm. Yeah, there's really nothing we can do. I guess Our we just trust them to not uh, do anything I would do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. After a short while, uh, the pale man comes back and he's followed by um, by a figure wrapped in gray cloaks. Um, who is the, the the first the, the thing that really catches your eye about this person is his hair. Um, it's black, it's just this really deep dark black, but it's uh, it's sparkling. It's like there's countless tiny specks of light flickering in his hair. Uh, it feels like you're looking at a slice of the night sky. Um, as he comes over, um, he uh, he approaches Pip directly. Uh, the other man goes back on the altar. Uh, a short distance away, but like 15 feet, not too far. Um, and he's watching what's going on. It, feel, it feels very... Um, uh, like it's fully judging uh, the situation as it develops. Uh, while the black haired man um, leans forward a little bit to get a little bit closer to Pip's height uh, and uh, um, looks at him. Yes, he's a uh, normal looking uh, brown eyes. He seems to be about the, the same age as uh, the other man. And he, he says, Hello there. Uh, I've been told you have a you have a cough? <coughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, how long have you had this? Pip holds up a five. He pauses for a moment. Days? <clears throat> Days. Ah, uh, thank you. Okay. Are there many uh, people around us? Uh, one of the people that was sitting in the benches left. And uh, so it's there is one other person praying, uh, the pale person and the black-haired person. All right. Um, could I whisper to him then? Um, if it's possible, could we talk in private afterwards? I have to relay a message. Uh, Brook. Roll a stealth check. Oh, wow. <coughs> that one was real. Oh, that was legitimate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, by the way, I have your little minis over here. Ah, that are that are to scale. All right, all right. So I'll re -roll, I'll re -roll. And Pontifex. You got this, Dennis. <laughs> oh. Oh, it's not actually oh, it's empty. Five... I can't see the number at all. Oh, is that a... 18. It's an 18. So 23. Ooh. 
Wait, what? Did, what? What? What did you roll? Oh, you rolled 18. with this one. The crab inspiration. Yeah, I rolled a ten before that. Okay, and the total is twenty-three. Okay. Crab inspiration. Bloop gone. <laughs> Thank you for that, Austin. You're welcome. I okay. need to use mine at some point. <laughs> Um, so, mm, okay, so I'm rolling dice. Don't worry, don't panic. Um, right. <laughs> um, the dark haired man puts a hand on Pip's head. Um, and uh -oh. it, <laughs> It's like the the entire like open palm of the hand pressing up against his forehead. Um, and uh, you just feel like the slightest feeling of warmth um, washing over you for just a moment. And he um, pulls away his hand. Um, Pip. You have four temporary hit points. Oh. Is my cough gone? Uh, is it? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, then he, uh, he straightens uh, his back, um, nods, like just uh, like this, this uh, approving uh, uh, nod towards Pip, like in a there you go kind of way. And he says, are you feeling better? Mm-hmm. Ah, excellent. Um, you... You did well to... And uh, he addresses Brooke. You did well to bring him here. Um, is this your... First time in Aria? I don't remember seeing either of you. Uh, I have been around the area, but never visited Aria before. Then, uh... I should show you around, uh, a little tour of the temple. Sure, why not? Uh, please, uh, follow me. Let's start with right here. And uh, he starts just telling you a little bit about the history of the temple. He points at the statue of the opossum, uh, asks how much you guys know about the Plurian Pantheon. Um, he, uh, doesn't really he doesn't ask you many uh he doesn't really ask any que like personal questions uh, um but he just goes over uh yeah the, the history of the temple and avaria and like he quickly makes his way like away from the altar away from uh, uh just the the eyes of the the other man that's been watching the entire time um halfway through that uh, he like sort of like uh, the, the black-haired man taps the, uh, his forehead and says, Oh, uh, apologies, I have not introduced myself. I'm a man willed. <clears throat> Hello. Mr. Twilight Sun. I'm uh, Brooke, how yep, you tap? That's, that's me. Uh, Brooke. Yeah. And this is... Uh, the small one is Pip. The Pip. little bit larger one is Tekka. Oh, he's, uh, he, he looks up at the bench, uh, at, the, at, the, at the benches. Um, sees Tekka, just pauses for a moment and says, Oh, he's, he's with you? Oh, yeah. Well, uh, uh, Tekka, would you like a tour of the temple? Please, join us. Very well. Brooke, uh -huh. is this the one? It is. That is Mr. Twilight Sun. I have already introduced you. We have been looking for you. Um, you're, you're, Saying this while you're still in the main area of the temple, yeah? 
Uh, no, weren't we walking away? Oh, okay. That... Yeah, uh, yeah, right. You were. You, uh, I, I thought that guy was still sitting on a bench, so he just called out to him, so you're all still like there. No, no, this was. But if you wait, okay, if you wait for him to like take you past the archway and like on the right uh, uh, side of the temple, then yeah, at that point you'd be on your own. Um, and by the time you're like out of your shot, he sort of like stops giving you a tour of the temple, uh, and he instead is sort of like beelines for this one door, and uh, um, he nods at what Tekka is saying, but doesn't really reply yet. Uh, he just opens the door, it leads to a tiny little cozy office, and he uh, says, uh, Should we talk in here? Yeah. Yes. Talix, you hear? We found him. Uh, I think he's... I think we're in his office now. Oh, God. And once you're all inside, he closes the door behind you and um, uh, sort of like lights out a sigh of relief uh, and says, Ooh, okay. Um, uh, apologies about that. It's just. Um, the Arch Cleric hasn't really given me any breathing room in the last uh, uh, four days. Um, you said you have a message for me uh, from the Phantoms? Uh, Looks a brook. <clears throat> No, it's not from the Phantoms. It's from a name from a man named Telex Moyer. Oh, shit. Okay. Um, and he goes back at the door and puts like his ear up to it uh, and waits. And then um, he's just for you to like step away from the door. Uh, more towards the back of the office, and he uh, comes back towards you, and he nervously rubs his hands and says, uh, "I, I knew it. I, had a f I, I knew it was going to be him. I, had a, uh, I guess. Is he okay? He is okay. We're asking the same about you. We've gotten your warning. Oh well, he has." You know the leaf thing? Right, um, I was hoping to speak uh, to him before the, the arch cleric would uh, get to him. Does he know? Wait, no, uh, the message. What is the message? Uh, not gonna lie. Unless there was an actual message I was supposed to deliver. <laughs> <laughs> I. <laughs> kind of made that message thing up. I just wanted to check in on you, see what's going on, on his request. <laughs> <laughs> He's worried about me? Uh, I'm fine. Does he... He doesn't know what's going on, does he? Um, no. We don't. He starts pacing uh, back and forth. Uh, um... He, he looks like he's trying to maintain some composure, but it just seems like visibly worried. Um, and then he looks at, uh, at Brooke uh, and says, Well, there's been, um, how do I put this? An accident. And uh, the arch cleric of the fairy dragon has come all the way here from Plurna just to speak with Talix. And uh, it's not good. <clears throat> Pip, wait, don't tell him everything yet. Let's hear this first. Um, do you want us to relay that message? Do you want us to warn him? I was hoping to speak with him directly. I, uh, uh, I can't leave yet without the arch cleric in knowing, but uh, I might be able to later tonight when when it's gone. Otherwise, uh, you can deliver a message. Yes, but you need to be careful. Um, everyone, all the guards in town are looking for him, and they might realize that something is up if they just see a bunch of people coming in a temple, talking to me, leaving, coming back. Uh, you understand that, yeah? Of course.
I mean, if have to, I can change my looks before I leave and then relay the message. Otherwise, we can just stay here for a day and then relay the message tomorrow. Or Pip could relay the message immediately, but then he would be able to answer. Oh, uh, you're both capable of magic. And he seems more impressed with Pip than with Brooke. Um, because with, uh, cause with Brooke it's a given. Um, given who he, uh, what he is. But with, uh, with Pip he just seems like he smiles a little bit at him. Um, almost like in a proud grandparent kind of way. <laughs> uh, since Inwild actually touched Pip's head before, I know that disguise self doesn't really hold up to touch very well, so he might have picked up on that. Okay. Um, then he glances down at Pip's amulet uh, and pauses. He stares silently for a few seconds, um, then, like, almost entirely forgetting about the conversation took place up until this moment. He just leans forward a little bit more. He, uh, he leans onto, like, he, he, he has his hands on his knees and says, Uh, Pip, do you do... Uh, is this divine magic that you're capable of? Mm-hmm. Have you been having dreams of the fox? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wait, which one? Mm -hmm. Which was that? <laughs> Vague. <laughs> How fox-like. <laughs> uh, could you nod for me or shake your head? Pip does both. Uh, let me guess. You been circular motion. Uh, you've been seeing the fox in your dreams, and you've gained magical powers. But wait, are you doing this now? This um, and he like waves his hand above, just like above his hair, where the uh, where the illusion would be uh, reaching. Uh, do you do you let him? Yeah. Okay. Uh, he does that, and he just looks straight up surprised. Uh, um. Uh, oh, yep. Yeah, there it is. And then he says, "Ah, not divine magic, uh, of course." Pip grins. <laughs> <sighs> Do you Will. know, um, Pip, about the fox? Mm, Pip tilts his head from one way to another, basically saying a little. Okay. Okay. Uh, if Talix trusts the three of you sufficiently to um, send you here to bring his words to me and mine to him. I... I can't trust you with the full extent of the situation. Uh, let me keep this brief. A few months ago, the fox has... Um, well, it appears that the fox has died. And uh, the Jade Council has arrested Ghoul Borgak as a possible suspect. It seems that she's been up to a lot of shady things, and one of the last people that she talked to uh, is Talix. The Council has sent an Archcleric to speak with him in that regard, and uh, I am concerned. Ghoul. Borga? Uh, uh, the the arch cleric of the fox, member of the Jade uh, Council. Okay. I was hoping <laughs> to hear Talix's side of the story before, well, 
uh, before before Arch Cleric Thar gets to him. That's uh, the man that you saw back there. Oh. Um. All right. So you don't want us to raise any more suspicion, right? Please. Uh, everything you can do to um. Uh, not attract any attention would definitely help. Uh, you in particular. Yeah. Um, nods towards Tekka. Uh, um. Well, I'm sure you know how it is. Plenty of people will be uh, looking at you. Alright, let's... I am aware. Let's say we get him the message either tonight or tomorrow. How do you want to keep communicating? I don't. I think communication between myself and Talix is dangerous. I... I don't mean to worry him. I don't mean to worry you, but... Oh, it is a serious. I don't know if... He should even be coming back to Arya at all. No, that is too dangerous. If you are to communicate, you should meet him. <clears throat> I can try um, to find him later tonight. Uh, even the arch cleric sleeps sometimes. Do you have a? If you could give me some kind of directions, I can find my way to him. If you want, I can accompany you tonight. Just tell me where I should be. Okay. You could meet outside the northern gate. Uh, yes. Leave the northern gate and uh, move straight north uh, for about for about fifteen minutes. I'll I'll find you. All right. Okay. Um. What are you going to say if they ask you what you talked with us about? Or do you think they will believe that you showed us around the church? Uh, right, I should finish my tour, shouldn't I? Yes. Oh, and um, uh, you, um, uh, Pip, you should probably put that, that amulet away for the time being. Mm. It puts it away and replaces it with the red beak one. <laughs> okay. Um, let me just go through this real quick. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> you gave Austin a fox and killed it. That was planned from the start. You're <laughs> cruel. <laughs> you give him a fox to feel happiness just to take it away. <laughs> it tracks with Pip's backstory. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Um. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's everything. So, <clears throat> Enwild will uh, just. Let you out of the office and then smoothly proceed to continue the tour. He takes you through this part of the temple uh, that like ceases to be a temple and instead it's a library. Uh, there's just shelves and shelves filled with books. Um, which is a little unusual. Um, I guess Brook would really be the only one to be able to tell that it's unusual. Um, for, for a temple. Uh, but it seems that there's like a a large, almost a majority of the space within the temple is actually dedicated to uh, to research and uh, to uh, collecting and storing and analyzing knowledge. 
Uh, and once you guys loop all the way back, you come out from the door on the left side compared to the entrance. By then, um, Arch Cleric Thar is no longer on the altar. Um, you just don't see him at all. Um, and uh, and will just uh, lets you go. He wishes you a good evening. Uh, acting as casual as you can. And you guys leave the temple? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Talix, you'll hear in your mind, <clears throat> there's a lot of really bad stuff going on, and I think you're in a lot of trouble. Oh, also tell Pontifex they had a library here. It was nice. Uh, Talix is concerned. But yeah, you... <laughs> They, they said I'm in trouble. Oh? I... I can only really mean one thing, but... I thought that was long behind me. Is there something I should know? <gasps> uh... Alex, whatever you've gotten yourself into, I will give you whatever help I can. You can trust me. That's... It's a mistake I made a long time ago. It's... I'm past that. I'm long past that. How bad? I... I don't know yet. Uh, we'll have to talk to them more. Uh, I assume they'll be coming back to meet with us. Uh, and we can talk it all out then. Sure. Give me some time, Professor. Sure. Just, uh, don't go out of eyesight. Okay. <clears throat> Are we going straight out of the... gate again? I, I think, think that so. makes sense. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> All right. Um, when you go through the, um, when you go through the gates, um, the same guard that welcomed you in, uh, um, he, he's just going to ask, living already? <coughs> yeah. Uh... Uh, it, My... It's dark outside. There's a couple of inns in town where you could be spending the night. We have to be somewhere really early tomorrow. So we gotta walk through the night. My friend here was pretty sick, and that's why instead of resting, we looked for help. A uh, roll a persuasion check, Brook. Can Pip cough once to give me <laughs> advantage? Oh. <laughs> I'm not sure if that would help. No, I don't think so. Since you said I was cured. Oh, you said, oh, damn, wait, wait, wait. You said persuasion, <laughs> right? Yes. Uh, well, it's supposed to be, uh, it's supposed to be deception. Um, well, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it it's deception. <clears throat> this is why you don't send me talking. <laughs> oh. Hey! Hey! <laughs> okay. Um. 
There is... The guard seems disappointed more than anything, uh, but just, like, he, he seems to, to um... Um... Have, uh, glanced worriedly at Pip with, uh, with a somewhat of a genuine concern and says, Oh, well, I'm glad he's better. Uh, don't leave the road. Um, and be careful. All right. Thank you. See you in the future. Um, I hope there's a road leading towards where Talix and Pontifex are. And there really isn't. Like the main, the main road uh, um, is through the eastern gate. Uh, but in the north, there is like a s much less trafficked road that it just takes like in between these sparse farms here and there. Um, and in order to go straight north, uh, you have to like a little uh, eventually uh, to start leaving it. Um, but, well, you do what you have to do. <laughs> the guard hears some rustling in the grass behind him. And what? Some rustling in the grass behind him. Oh! Kip <laughs> is just using his mind to make right. a little distraction. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can't do that from a great distance, right? No. <laughs> okay. Huh. Guard turns around. You guys are just like halfway <laughs> jogging uh, away from there. <laughs> <laughs> you don't look back. Um, well, I'm just gonna pack this back up. Whoa! That scared me. <laughs> I missed the miniature Pontifex and Talix. The fox! <laughs> no! Um. Oh. He was Are you the going... best one, right? Like, he was known to be the best one. Are you going to go straight to Talix? Or are you going to, like, the meeting spot and stay in there? Uh... I think we're going straight to Talix. Okay. Yeah, Talix isn't very far from that city anyways. They can yeah. easily go there and then we all yeah, go yeah. north. Talix and Pontifex. Alright! Um... Then you meet up uh, uh, with uh, the rest of the group again. Take Should we take here. a break? Ah, yeah. yes! Absolutely. It's been an hour and a half. Uh, okay then. I'll see you in about 10 minutes. Sounds good. Okay. Get some snacks, get some water. Not the fuck. Oh, <laughs> no. Damn. Why not the crab? <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what did the crab do to you? They killed my rat! It's not the <laughs> Yes, the crab god personally killed your rat. Is there a god mm. called the crab? This can mean only one thing. Yeah, there is. Vengeance. Yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, the ra both of the machines were modeled after deity animals. Oh. Mm -hmm. the, the ravens and the crab. The gods of the angry. Okay. Yeah, do you want me to stay on this channel or am I like moving like I usually do? Up to you. I mean, are you gonna Get talk out. about private things? They should. Okay. <laughs> All right. Bye. <laughs> okay. So let me bring. Uh. Ah. Uh, 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 All right. I got it. I got the stream back. Hello. We're back. Welcome We're here. Back. We're gonna continue. So, um, the party split up for a little while. Some went to check out the colony, some waited, and you are in the process of reuniting. Go right ahead. You have some splaining to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, we met the Eldwin guy, and... He basically said that currently it's not safe for you to come back because apparently the arch cleric from the fairy dragon Gulborgag came to see you. Uh, the Gulborgag is the arch cleric of the fox. Oh, that's what I'm. Uh, yeah, that's what I meant. 
<laughs> but you said the right name, I'm sure, which I also forgot. <laughs> <clears throat> because apparently... I'm not sure if I understood that right, but... The fox has died? Pontifex and the... Pontifex and Talix <laughs> would know the name of the Archcleric or, or the Fairy Dragon is Baryon Thar. He is an Air... Mm. Uh, he is an Air Genazi. What do you mean you didn't understand? The fox is... What? What do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he didn't want to give us, like, all the information. So... That is what he told us from what we can tell you so far. But he also said he's going to visit us at... Midnight? Or later at night? Like, north of the Northern Gate. 50 minute walk. So you can probably get your answers from there. I'm... I mean, I'm as confused as you are, right? Pip just sadly and tenderly pacing. hands the fox amulet to Talix. Uh, hold on to that for now. You, it's yours. Talix is gonna just pace. Okay. Wait. So what? Do, why do I have to hide? Um. This Apparently. council believes you have the answers, like Gulborgak did what they did. Wait, what? W what she did? <coughs> what did she do? She has been arrested for whatever actions the council learned of. We were not given details. You said he was coming to speak with us. Well, he wanted to speak with you. Technically, he wanted to hear your story. <clears throat> or your side of the story first before he gave you this information. So... So I don't... I have no idea what's going on. I, this is the first I've heard of any of this. Brooke shrugs. I mean, have you talked to her? Oh, yeah, she gave, she gave me a mission to do here. It's nothing to do with the fox or, or another. And no reason why. Talix will uh, take off the amulets and just look it over. What are you looking for? Uh, nothing really. Just looking it over and just kind of rolling it around in his fingers. Mm -hmm. There's. I need to hear more of the story. That priest. Then you should wait north of the gate tonight I should alone I mean if you want we can come with you I'm a little afraid of what might happen uh, this is not what I expected Professor, right. <laughs> how, how is Pontifex handling this? Uh, I think he's just trying to listen and give you the space that you asked for. He's he's trying to just kind of internalize everything. Mm. It's trying to stay out of the mood. Pip oh. looks down at the fox amulet and 
just says, Oh no. Egon. Yeah. He never lost his faith at all. I need to write to him. Uh, or maybe he's already heard of it. How have I not, <laughs> in all this time, since we've been there? I mean, maybe the church and Vera didn't know yet, right? This is terrible. I never well, thought... sir. I thought this. <laughs> I thought this was done, you know. The era of ashes. I mean, I was surely hoping so. I'm so sorry. I have no idea what I got us into. Well, we'll obviously follow you to the meeting tonight. Is there anything we should know or be aware of, just in case things go south? No, uh... Enwild is, is trustworthy. If he... If he says that... He just wants to meet with us and... Talk to us... If he said that... He, he wouldn't lie. He... Maybe can't? <laughs> he wouldn't lie. He was very worried about being followed or us raising suspicion. So maybe... I don't know, if we're somehow able to have some people on the lookout while this meeting is happening, right? As we see someone following him. <sighs> that's, that's... that's smart. That's at least what we used to do when we had important meetings set up. Just making sure that no one is trying to pull a fast one on us. Huh. Yeah, that's... <laughs> that's true. Okay. Uh, would that be you then, Brooke? Hmm. I mean, I can probably look out, right? But we have... Assuming we're meeting in that forest, there's a lot of stuff to cover, right? Especially not knowing what we are going up against, or if we're going up against Enwild and the Archbishop. They are probably powerful magic users, right? We should not be against them. No, ah, no, yeah. no, no. <laughs> uh, look, if they... If, if, if it's gotten to the point that Enwild is going to arrest me, then just let it happen. <laughs> Run away. Uh, no, he's, if he said that he just wants to talk to me, I, I believe him. <clears throat> hmm. I don't right, think I can, he will. I can still be on the lookout. Okay. Pip can, you, you can communicate with Pip, right? Yeah. Or Pip you want can him talk to, to you. You want him to be with you? Uh, no, but... Unless he really wants to be there in person, he likes to go on trees, right? Get a different POV, or uh, point of view. Sure. <laughs> and... Well, as long as everyone can communicate with each other. Pip can speak to me. I can speak to one of you in a sense, I guess, with my leaf. With your leaf. Anyone else have any tricks? Professor, how how far can you reach with your uh to my telepathy? Yeah. Not far. 
you could likely throw something farther than I can reach with my mind. It's a close proximity kind of thing. Professor, if, if my mission is somehow against the Council's wishes, do you want to be there with me, or would you rather be somewhere at a safe distance? No, I will be with you if that is okay. Okay. Uh, I'll I'll vouch for you at every turn. <laughs> Obviously, you if something is wrong here, you had nothing to do with it, and I'll I'll swear for you. Well, there are two parts to this. Uh, first, uh, my reputation with the council is not exactly stellar, given uh, my quote unquote defection towards the arcane arts. Uh, I don't think that that is as big of a deal as. Uh, you're making that part out to be, and also if it is any consolation, uh, if what you are doing, whatever your mission is, was, uh, if the council is against it, I believe you're in the right. I have reason to believe. If the council is in opposition to what you are doing, uh, there is a misunderstanding on their end. <clears throat> Remind me, did you tell us what your mission is? Uh, no. Nope. I suppose I should say this now. What Gulborgok gave me was this. Hold, hold out the amulet again. And as she explained to me, it contains a seed. A seed from Vakanoth. I'm meant to plant it here. Uh, somewhere in the heart of the New World. Oh. To connect the two worlds, to... To let us be here as we are at home. To maybe even let us communicate like we never have before. And to bring all of Akhenaut's gifts here to these people. It's... It could only be good for everyone. In what of the Ladarians? They would surely be able to benefit from Vakanal's child, just as we do back home. Have you asked? <laughs> asked who? Anyone. Anyone of Ladari, if they want this. Have you asked Tekka if this is something he would want? Talix will look to Tekka and just... Wait. Have you asked Pip? Taka, what do you th what do you think of this? You you see what I mean, right? I mean, you don't know Vakanoth, but I do not know what that will do. But I do know. Plurna is not Ladaria. Well, anyway, all I was meant to do at first was meet with Jamiel and find an ideal spot. <laughs> From there, I was just meant to send a message home and hear my next step. But I, as far as I knew, this was the will of the whole of the council. I spoke with Gulborg Ock, but surely if you hear from one arch cleric, he, 
You wouldn't expect... Whatever... Whatever is going on, I have no idea. I did not know of your mission, of what you were tasked to do, but... Uh, I was tasked to protect you in the process. Uh, so it is not just uh, Gulborgach. It is, uh, you have the support of the goat as well. So if if it is not unanimous, it is at least not uh, sovereign. The fox and the goat are working together for this one. When I say the support of the goat, I do not mean of the arch cleric. I mean of of the goat. Well, maybe I never had the support of the fox either. Is getting more messy than anticipated. So, what are we to do? Are you just, are you saying? To be clear, Gulborgok was arrested because they think she killed the fox. We do not know the details. But she seems somewhat responsible. The talk of a killing one of the deities is a no small task. I doubt its authenticity in its entirety, but uh, if anyone could do it, it would likely be an arch cleric or multiple arch clerics I find it hard to believe a single one could accomplish such a feat but uh, I also find it hard to believe and yet we live in a world <laughs> where even Valkanoth herself was killed right and it took more than a single person to do it that is true Alex, you'll hear in your mind. Do gods have a civet? <laughs> that I don't know, Pip. We always think that, uh... Well, us Plurnans. That we go to live among the highest boughs of Akhenoth with the gods, in a way. Or exist among them. But if a god dies, I, 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 honestly, I can't even really comprehend what that means. It means it can be brought back. I don't know about believing these conjectures of people, but one thing that you can believe is history. At least what we have to go off of. If the tree itself can be killed and then reborn, I don't see why one of the deities that inhabits it could not go through the same ordeal. And this is, of course, assuming this is even true to begin with. I mean, if we want to believe in the history, that would also mean that the death of God <clears throat> could potentially lead into another war. Right. Oh, gods. <sighs> I feel sick. Oh, but... Oh, when is he gonna be here? Uh, uh, at some point during the night when he can sneak out. In a few hours, I think. Should... So we should head into the woods where we're supposed to meet him and... Uh, and split up and... And wait. Watch. <clears throat> like, uh, we never asked you, do you want to be with Brooke or with us? Witness the conversation. I will be with you. Uh, understandable. Since, since I can't really communicate with you guys like you can, um, 
If something serious, really serious happens, I will just drink that flask and you will see a big light. Then you know that something is up. Oh, I thought Pippa would be with you. Oh, yeah. If you're staying at the same place, then yeah. And Pip goes to stand by Brooke. All right, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that works. Whatever. Um, all right. Okay. On to the meeting, I guess. <laughs> all right. So we'll be oh, Halix, Tekka, and Pontifex uh, heading to the designated spot, while the other two will be uh, further away, keeping an eye on things. Is that, is that they would plan? probably be in front, like more towards the city, so that they would pass by them first before they got to the meeting place. Before mm -hmm. Enold got to the meeting place, I, I would, would assume. So, like, if there was someone else trailing behind them, they would know. Yeah, we're hiding in the trees where they can't see us. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. The smallest and the biggest. Let's go. Squeak. Roll a stealth we're check. <laughs> I was squeak all along. <laughs> <laughs> Say stealth. Oh uh, yeah, you and and Brook. The book is squeak. <laughs> hey. oh, oh, what? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Man, both of those five We disappear Damn. into the shadows. Holy shit! Damn. Okay. Add that to the counter. <laughs> mm. Damn. Oh. Good job. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> mm. Okay. Um, with the two of you hidden and the others further away, uh, you wait. Um, the minutes go by, and then the hours. Um, you're staying up through through all this. Ta There's no way Talix is sleeping. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm not sleeping either. I'm mm -hmm. supposed to watch out. No okay. Sleep. And, you know, with how late it is and how much uh, you, you, today you have walked, uh, uh, it, it gets kind of difficult uh, for some of you to keep your eyes open. Um, but you push through it. Uh, um, this is This might be the single most... Uh, serious situation you guys have found yourselves in yet. Um, Pip, you can see in the dark, so eventually, this would be um, about two hours before dawn, um, eventually you would see something um, in the air. Um, both of you hear the flapping of wings, and eventually within, uh, within the, the limits of Pip's uh, uh, dark vision, um, he'd be able to see the same man he saw before, the um, the man with black hair that looks like the starry sky, um, flying about 10 feet off the air, uh, 10 feet off the ground, um, with wings spreading from his back that look uh, just like his hair, like slices of the, the, of the night sky. Um, doesn't they look like bird wings, but they don't actually have any feathers to them or just any flesh. You just um, they they just they're just black with all these uh, sparkly dots in them, uh, propelling him forward. And he seems to have to be completely missing you. Uh, so if you want to intercept him, you'd have to like do that now. Uh, well, Talix just hears in his mind, um, Talix. You didn't tell me that Inwild was part bird. Oh. oh, this... This must be serious. I think he's flying here. Has Talix ever seen him fly? I would imagine, probably not. No. Yeah, there's heard of it. There's... Uh, yeah, okay. uh, there's rumors about it. Uh, um, it is believed <gasps> that the most... Uh, uh, the most Azimor can fly. <laughs> Uh, but <laughs> I <have the> card. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yet he has never seen it happen. He might have even like doubted it because he, yeah, he's never seen it with his own eyes. Hmm. Okay, well, Talos will keep his eyes up. And um, just a few seconds after Pip's message, eventually, um, 
he comes into view. And first you see all these stars uh, um, that is like that some of his body parts are made out of, uh, <laughs> and then eventually you can kind of distinguish that it. it's him. Um, besides, I think Pontifex is the other person without dark vision. Um, right. But tonight, wait, what day is it? Uh, this day, okay, there's still plenty of moonlight. Uh, um, with. Uh, well, not a lot, but there's still some. Uh, so you can somewhat see uh, just like the shape of a figure uh, landing near you and uh, these wings uh, uh, almost um, how do I put this all the little dots that you're seeing on them the little stars they seem to just kind of like fall to the ground and then disappear um, Talix you are Met with the uh, Enwil the Twilight Sun again. Oh, sir, uh, it's good to see you. He steps forward, takes a, a quick glance uh, at Pontifex and Tekka, uh, and then just kind of rushes towards Talix and just. Um, Puts a hand on his shoulder and like, leans forward a little bit, takes a, takes a good look at him, uh, both sides of his face, and he says, You're okay. You're okay. Uh, I've, I've heard some rather outlandish stories from my companions. Uh, it's my, my first hearing of any of it. Here, let's, let's keep walking away from the colony. I'll... I'll tell you everything. All right. Uh, yeah, Talos will turn to walk with them and kind of just gesture towards the others. Towards uh, Tekka and Pontifex. I don't know what... I guess Brook and Pip can just stay looking out. We're looking. All right. We're looking so good. <laughs> You can't even see us. That's how good we're looking. <laughs> Where did they go? <laughs> they were supposed to stay on the lookout. Pip, are you still here? <laughs> <laughs> the master of the yard is staying so incredibly still. <laughs> I've become invisible. <coughs> <coughs> okay. Um. So you'll be walking further away to the north, uh, uh, away from the colony. Uh, the lights of the city at this point are, um, for the most part, gone. But you can still spot them in the distance until you go over uh, the incline of the hill and then it's out of sight. Um, the fox. Is that really true? I can tell you what I have been told and what I know to be true. I have received a report about a couple of weeks ago of uh, a cleric of the fox here uh, on the peninsula losing their powers. Egon. We, we met one. Egon. If it was the same one. Yes, from the colony of Cleon, cool. yeah, yeah. Was, well, that, was that who you were referring to? I suppose then we're bringing the counter up to two. Mm. But is that is that all we know? That, that doesn't necessarily... What else could it mean? It's just like what happened with, with Wakanath. But, well, so is it happening back at home? What What's this? Yes. We've... I've personally only received the news about what happened back in... Back at home. Uh, four days ago. Now five. News takes a long time to travel between the continents. But this happened months ago. 
And with the news has also come the Arch Cleric. The Arch Cleric's come all this way. Just to see you. Well, he's also in his own words cleaning up some messes and he's getting in touch with uh, uh, this cleric uh, back from Erka. Um, I suppose it's only a matter of time before he knows about uh, uh, Egon? Yes, but... But what does Gulborgok have to do with any of this? Well, everything I know about what happened back at home uh, uh, is filtered through what uh, Baryon told me. So I, I keep that in mind. What he what he has shared with me is that uh, uh, after after the church realized that uh, the all clerics of the fox across uh, the continent were reporting losing their powers, uh, we looked. Well, the the council. Uh, investigated the situation, and ultimately things started uh, uh, showing up. It turns out that uh, that Ghoul has been up to uh, a lot of things that the Council was unaware of. One of them being speaking with you, um, assigning some kind of task to you. Nobody in the Council knew about this. They all they all thought you were still in in Ladaria. Thus, the reason why they want to speak with you. They want for me the same thing I do. I want to know your side of the story. Well, that's... I'm happy to let them know. Uh, I only I only took a, this mission because I thought it was the will of the council. They can know. Is that... Here. She she gave me this. I'll, I'll basically just recount what I did with the rest of them. Okay. It's a seed. I, yeah, I don't know if you want to go through that whole thing again, but... <laughs> it's fine. Uh, you tell him it's a seed from Vakana? that she instructed you to plant with the help of Jamio? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah, throughout all that, his eyes just grow wider and wider. Um, until at the end of it, uh, he just exhales deeply and says, That is incredible. I... a seed. Vakanath has never been known to... Well, except one time. Oh? Well, I've you... never heard of it myself. Um, you know the story of the fox, yes? The story of the fox. Uh, how he came to become who he is. I thought... Uh, now, hold on. I'm just remembering that he climbed the tree. I don't remember anything about his seed. <sighs> Jason doesn't... <laughs> no, no, that's, that's fine. That's, uh, that's, that's what Talix knows. Oh. Um, and... Uh, yep. And... Uh, he climbed the tree and... Well, I don't remember a seed. Well, that is one of the variations of uh, the story of the fox. Uh, there are many, but 
some of them include a fruit. Uh, and some people believe that the fox reached the highest branch because there was a fruit on it. And once he ate it, he was gifted the knowledge of the world. And if that version of the story were to be true, the, I suppose the fruit could have had a seed inside. And of course, there's other versions. There's the uh, the one involving the wyvern, uh, but... Well, that's... Still, are you... Do you know for a fact that this is what the ghoul says it is? That is what she said. Can I... I'm not sure how she came in possession of it. Can, can I see it? it? One moment, Telex. Uh, before we press any further, um, end wield, yes? Uh, uh, right. My name is Pontifex Vos Dalus I am a former cleric of the goat, you could say. Uh, if we want to go further with this, uh, would you allow me uh, just a peek? Uh, do not resist. And he's gonna uh, cast the tech thoughts and pry. <laughs> yeah. Prying into the mind of an arch cleric and telling him not to resist. I'm sure it'll be fine, <laughs> but. Well, Enwild is not an arch cleric. Oh, whatever. But yeah, I'm, I'm still, yeah. The most powerful yeah. cleric in Aria. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. Uh, Austin, we lost you from TTS. Oh. And Discord. And Discord. No! <laughs> um, he is still muted. Hello? Oh, welcome Hello? back! You okay? <laughs> yeah. Oh, did your internet uh, let you down? I don't... I think, like... Uh, my computer, like, black screened for a second. Oh, damn. Came... <laughs> oh, yikes. Like... Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um... I don't know how much you missed, but Pontifex is trying to look in, to read the thoughts. Okay. Okay. Uh, so remind me, it's a saving throw. Yeah, wisdom, maybe? Yep, it's a wisdom <laughs> He's asking him to not resist. Roll a persuasion check. Uh, this is... Uh... What's that, Jason? Oh, yeah. No, go on. Fifteen. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay. Uh, Pontifex. You're... At first, uh, the moment you cast the spell, the very first uh, uh, feelings and, uh, and emotions uh, that wash over you, that uh, um, you're seeing um, through the heart of this man, um, are of concern, of uh, uh, fear. And uh, the moment when you pry a little bit deeper, uh, you, you feel some resistance that then... Um, goes away and uh, um, you see uh, a vision of uh, Vakanath uh, you see you find yourself standing among her roots looking up at the enormous tree ahead of you um, and the whole thing feels it's it's blurry all the colors are they're like pastel colors uh, um, the the edges of everything. It's everything is a little hard to like grasp, and you realize it's not just because you're seeing this through the thoughts of another, but it's because you're seeing their memory of a dream, and uh, in that dream there is a. Uh, it is not a voice. 
Um, but it's like a meaning that is conveyed without words. Uh, sort of like some forms of telepathy can do. Um, and the meaning of those words that are spoken to Enwild and that you're hearing uh, through your own perception of it is, uh, um, is the following. Tell him that he must hide it. It? Mm-hmm. Is, is that as far as he's getting for now? Uh, yeah, because that's actually the end of that particular vision. Um, yeah, yeah. Perfect. And then beyond that, you're you're still... Uh, it feels like the concern that he has for Talix, now you're like probing a little deeper and he's thoughts shift a little bit uh you you kind of see yourself through his own eyes for a moment um a mm -hmm. bit perplexed but also there's this solemnity of it knowing that like he knows what you have just seen um mm -hmm. and like he al he allowed you to see it uh, um and you can tell that he concerned that yes for talix is genuine um and he but so is his loyalty to the council. And overall, his feelings on the matter seem to be that there has to be some kind of mistake. And that ultimately, the whole thing should end up getting resolved. Well, this is, uh, this is so far so good, surprisingly. Uh, no offense. Um, would you be willing to share what it is? that you were supposed to hide. I get the feeling that you shared that with me on purpose. Uh, well, I was going to get to it. Uh, Fair enough. Alex, a few days ago I had a, a dream, um, a vision. <laughs> you, well, you, uh, you wouldn't know about it, but uh, your friend, your Pontifex, and most clerics out there, um, they know about visions being sent by the gods through dreams. And uh, I heard the opossum speaking to me. And he told me... He told me to tell someone, uh, tell him, to hide it, uh, something. And I've been thinking about it for a while, and now that I stand here and you're telling me about uh, to seed, I think the message might have been meant for you. I Hide think, it uh, from the... Effects, like, makes eye contact with Talix and gives a nod. I think they are okay. That means hide it from the council. I am not one to question the will of the gods, uh, particularly the will of the opossum, but I struggle to understand why ghoul why why the opossum himself might be doing something that the council shouldn't know about especially Maybe the council after what you told me wouldn't they want this i mean a seed from vakanath on a new world uh... maybe what the gods want and what the council wants it's different. Forgive me, sir, but... <laughs> no, no, that, that makes sense. Forgive me for the what council, I'm about to say. The council speaks for the gods. The gods speak if, through them. If the council wanted... If the council wanted to overthrow or contain the Arch Cleric of the Fox, how would they best do that? Uh, 
Talix, whatever do you mean? It's just a feeling. Something's wrong. Gulborgok. If if the gods gave you that message, that means I think that Gulborgok was right. The gods I gave hope. me the message as well. Uh, you too? Mine was not to protect it. Mine was to protect Talix from the goat. Rather, it was a message from the goat. Delivered in the same way that yours was. Uh, I'm not sure what to make of all this yet. It's... But... I'll defer to the gods above anything else. It is wise. I have no love for the council anymore. Uh, so I feel I will speak freely and judge me accordingly if you wish. But uh, if one were to want to maintain one's position of power, uh, one's place in the world, creating a second one in a place you cannot control is scary. Uh, perhaps with another tree comes another council. Uh, someone would be their equal to challenge their authority and while the council is known to speak for the gods it is we have no way of knowing if they speak entirely from the gods and if this Gulborgok was doing something that uh, the council was not a fan of the best way to remove them from power would be to uh, bring the question of their credibility ostracize them from the well, from the community you could say and sever their connection to their deity so they are no longer a threat what is an arch cleric with no divinity but just a person of sir. course this is all conjecture but <laughs> and will sir Thank you so much. And, uh... I'm so sorry for implicating you in whatever I've gotten myself into here. What I've went through is nothing. Um... Baryon just... pastors me. Watches everything <laughs> I do. I believe he expects you to eventually come to me is waiting. Are there any other arch clerics in Ladaria that you know of? Not as far as I know. I don't know if that is good news or bad news. If... Is there anyone on the council who you know you can trust above the rest? It's a weird question, but I know you're quite close to them in a, in a lot of ways. Any you would consider more than uh, more than superiors? that the nature of the question is uh, itself scary. I shouldn't have to answer something like this, but um, I, I suppose I do have a close relationship with Joa, um, the Arch Cleric of the Opossum. Surely any follower of the Opossum couldn't be couldn't do something so drastic. Talix. 
I... I believe you have a choice to make. Will you meet with Baryon? Or will you walk away from Arya? I'm afraid that if... Uh, if you were to avoid him, you'd be avoiding the entirety of the Jade Church from now on. And that is not the option I would recommend. I think the whole matter can be resolved. Varian had questions for me and I answered them truthfully and that was that. I think the same will happen with you. And how are you interpreting your message from the opossum itself? I... <sighs> to hide it. Why would the opossum tell you? <laughs> the same way, why would the goat tell me? I'm afraid we have to assume... That the council shouldn't be told of this. I'm sorry, but I can't. I can't answer his questions. And then, what if you met with him, but uh, you, you lied about it? Uh, you don't have to mention this, or or we can. Uh, let's see. It is. This is a container. Yes. Yes. What if we replace it? Let him take it, but without knowing that what was originally in it has been is gone. That might appease him. You seek to lie to an arch cleric? I That sounds oh, I uh, That sounds like you're underestimating him. Peace requires sacrifices and where you draw the line on what uh, you're willing to give away and what you aren't is what determines who you are <coughs> and what you value i think lying is acceptable even if it is to an arch cleric if the order comes from a god then their authority is greater than Baryon's. <coughs> we'll take some time to consider it. But... If something goes wrong... <laughs> Sorry. <coughs> if something goes wrong, can I rely on you to help us? Even if it goes against the orders of the Arch Cleric? Truthfully. He pauses. I'm still in his head. <laughs> what? How long does that last? Does it not? Does it not last like 10 minutes at least? Is it not one minute? Uh, you're right, it's just one minute, never mind. Okay. <coughs> nice try. Do it again. No. Yeah, never mind. Okay. Yeah, he pauses, he rubs one of his arms, uh, uh, visibly uncomfortable. Um, until he nods, makes eye contact with Talix, nods again a bit more, um, with a bit more determination, and says, Yeah. Yeah, you can count on me. I've... I take care of everyone in Aria. I always have. Alright. Talix will just grab his hand with both hands and... Thank you so much. We, we, as a group, 
have some consideration to do before I I face him. But you'll Well, if everyone's okay with it, you'll see me in the morning. <laughs> and, uh, Enwild, remember that you serve the gods, not the council. Um, Estalic says he's holding his hand, uh, um... He, um, he nods solemnly, and then he uh, turns back towards Talix and says, "Whatever choice you make, um, I will stand by you." Thank you. <sighs> okay. Good luck. And good night. He slips out of your grasp and uh, he starts walking. And you see him heading towards uh, first, like at the top of the hill. And then he starts, um, instead of heading straight towards the colony, he begins to uh, sort of like circle it around. I send a leaf in the direction of our watch. <laughs> our ever-present tree sentinels. Yeah. <laughs> what does a leaf say? Leaf. Oh, I just I just sent a leaf. Okay, I just you just figured they would leaf, figure yeah. it out. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Brooke and Pepe went to leaf. It is time to leaf. He says something like, I don't know, a horse. <laughs> You. Leave me alone. I'm yeah. pushed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Pip, Pip is going to climb down from the tree, and then he's going to try and see if he, if uh, uh, if Enwil dropped any feathers. <laughs> <laughs> um, pretend that you rolled an investigation check and you just look very thoroughly, but no matter how hard you try, you find no feathers. Right, right, I guess I'll go down the tree as well. <laughs> and also look for feathers. <laughs> <laughs> no PS to ask. <clears throat> and and eventually you guys meet up. So after fully explaining the situation, <laughs> that Enwild says we gotta... Well, alright, is there something... Did you want to say something, Sid? No. Okay. Enwold says we have to, uh, you know, if we don't want to be hunted down by the council, I've got to try to somehow smooth talk uh, Thar. So, said we could maybe meet with them in the morning and uh, not try to explain things without, well, from... From what I gather, I can't actually let him know I have the seed, or else I certainly can't let him have it. No? If... If the gods really communicated with you, Professor, and with... and with Enwald, it sounds like... Gulborgok was doing their will. I'm inclined to agree. So, whatever's going on in the council now, it's... Well, it's... Something bad. At the end of the day, the decision of what to do with the seed lies with you. Uh, I was not told to protect the seed. But, uh... We could also we are to ignore this meeting and earn the ire of the council, we could simply go where the council has less power. To uh, Simli Elan, the Eleonardan colony. 
Yes, I, I had the same thoughts. Uh, I mean, the council might have less power there, right? But I'm assuming they're not openly working against each other. So I don't know if that yeah. would be an actual safe space for us. If I am with you, it is likely a safe space. Uh, there is a sort of traveling circus, you could say, of a certain disgruntled family I am having legal troubles with that is currently there. But uh, aside from that little petty <laughs> drama, I don't think there's any... Council representatives we should be worried about. How many women are in that group? <laughs> <laughs> as far as I am concerned, just one. Oh, but, uh, she is a doozy. <clears throat> uh, she is pissed. If I can give my two cents to that, uh, I mean... I guess Pontifex is right that you have the seat and you should decide on what to do with it. But uh, if you can somehow, or if you're somehow able to not start another war with your decision, I would rather appreciate that. Why would you say that? <laughs> I mean... <Can> I... <laughs> Was that a genuine question, or was it a Jason question? <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes. Yes! I mean... Oh. I personally do obviously don't have the best uh, past with the Jade Alliance, as you can imagine, right? And after having seen many things and how people turn on each other just for the sake of power, and claim that to be God's wish or whatever you want. Just be careful. Well, as long as I'm not serving any country and doing what I'm doing, then they can't blame anything like that, right? I wouldn't cause a war. I'm not I worried so. about you causing a war. I'm worried about the council. I've lived through one. I would prefer not to experience a second. I agree to that. Yeah, Brooke's super old too, right? Well, he's like 80. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, 85. So not as old as he is. We need to think of how to lie. At well, least long find... enough for us to get to... Well, if we find that one man... I'm not sure if he told us our name. The guy who sat at the altar, I might have already lied to him. Uh, anything about Pip comes up, apparently his parents are dead. <laughs> so... <laughs> maybe that will help you. Maybe that will help you uh, with your lie to make it more believable. I think I just... Maybe I do what Enwald said. Uh, I'll give them this without its contents and just say I don't know anything more. This is assuming that uh, they did not compel you to tell the truth. This is something even you are able to do and that I am able to do to some extent. This is an arch cleric. Perhaps they have already foresaw this. Could you, could you help me resist it, Professor? Okay. I wish I could be of more help, but honestly, unlikely. Hmm. Uh, this is not a cleric. Uh, they, I can't imagine they go a week without knowing what will occur throughout the week. Uh, simple magics like uh, compelling the truth is uh, trivial for them. And I mean, would they trust the word of you? 
over just making sure? Perhaps I not. Wouldn't. Well, can I lie without lying? <laughs> He's just risky, so one does not become an arch cleric by being frugal with magic. You can always twist the truth. Give enough truth that it's believable, and hide some important information with some lies. And if it doesn't work, then what? Well, then we have to leave the town without getting arrested by the guards. Uh huh. Flee in the face of an arch cleric. Yes. And what is the reward to this risk? Maybe we go an extra month or two without being hunted down by the Jade Council. Best case. Ha. Huh. Being hunted down by the Jade Council. Like good old times. <laughs> you know, Brooke, I don't think you were ever, uh... Specifically targeted by them before. I mean, it's a little different than being at war. I mean, I am an arcane user, right? And the whole thing started with pushing the arcane users to the limits. If it's true that they... They would even kill a god. And... And stage a coup against one of their own. We would have... I don't even know what they would do. And I'm... Frankly, I don't believe that even if you hand this thing over, they will just say, you know, okay, thank you for your service, be on your way. There will be depositions, it will be brought forth to the council to say your piece, likely to testify against the goal. This... I don't think this is something that will be resolved so easily. Kind of agree with the professor. Usually information this big, if people are looking for it, even if you give it to them, they don't necessarily let you go. So he's right. Especially if word gets out that uh, our friend in town and Wild, and that perhaps even myself, have gotten messages from the gods counter to their wishes, uh, could involve us in unpleasant ways. And as I said before, I am not here to protect this seed. I am here to protect you, and that is what I am trying to do. So we just leave. Is that what we're all saying? I can't come up with a better alternative. We go to Sim Leyland and bide time there, perhaps? We go there, but we don't stop. We keep going west. We get off Salzburg as quickly as possible. We are in Simleilan. I, I sent letters to my mentor back in uh, the place. I don't remember which one it was exactly. I think it was clear. Yeah. Uh, I asked him to send word to Simleilan uh, if it is there, if there is anyone I can confide this in. Perhaps trust for support, it would be him. It is one person who has no love for the council. Do you have anything else to do in Aria? Alex? Nothing that matters. 
Not really. Let's go. There's one thing I want to do before... Before we leave. Talix is just going to... Uh, write the word sorry on a leaf and send it, send it to Enwild. Mm. Okay. You focus on your spell until you feel, um, until you feel that the leaf uh, is no longer under your control. Mm. Okay. We should kick on immediately. We can make camp. Uh, well, sometime, but not too soon. Agreed. All right. So here, let me bring up the map. Um. What exactly is uh, the the route you'd like to take? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Crossing the rivers might be a little tough, but it's probably a lot better than going all the way around them. What alternatively what is this, like 15 days? <laughs> yeah. Alternatively, How... Alright, Talix knows the area. What are the odds that we could get some sort of vessel if we went down to the bay? There is a port uh, that he knows of. Uh, um, right, right here where, the, where this river meets the sea. Um, there isn't really such a thing as like... Um... Mm, Hmm. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Notes. This is, I know, like, this is probably too far into the ocean, right? <sighs> hold on, hold on, hold on. We have okay. to, like, skirt the Talix. coast the whole time. Yeah. You do know that there are ships um, that uh, bring materials from uh, uh, Arya to Simlielan that take this route. So, indeed, they stay. <coughs> Right on the coastline, uh, and then up the river. Um, the ships that go up to Similianon and back are kind of large, uh, and those will stop here at the uh, at the end of the river, and they have smaller boats that instead can go all the way up to Aria, uh, or just carts, depending on like what they're carrying. Um, and passage, like purchasing passage on these boats, is possible. And it would be one way of reaching, uh, uh, of reaching Simulion. We want to get there as quickly as possible, right? Uh, yes. Okay. And I think we actually go west to the bay. Everyone here is comfortable with boats? Lovely. We have to have the raft. <laughs> we have our magical life jackets. That's true. What could be safer? <laughs> Can I summon a devil before we go? You hear in your head, Talix. Do you have everything you need? I think so. But we all need to chant. Oh. You need our help. Yeah. Uh... uh... <laughs> I don't think that uh, Talex or I should participate in this little kumbaya. Uh, I I'd happily observe. How many right, people then. do you really need help on here? <laughs> as many people as possible. This is what Squeak told me, like, if this ever needed to happen, 
then everyone would need to stand around in a circle and chant, Squeak, gosh, the rocks, squeak, gosh, the rocks, over and over again until it's done. Yeah, I don't think I can do that. <laughs> <clears throat> can I inside check, Pip? <laughs> You're not here. <laughs> no, I don't hear him. <laughs> uh... Can I inside check Talos? Oh, yeah. oh, oh, Who is either. comfortable helping Pip summon a demon? Sorry, a devil. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a demon nope. would have been fine. <laughs> uh, Maybe to supply you know, whatever help I can, but I don't think I can participate in the infernal chant. I kind of don't want to be bound to any contract. I am still a cleric. Drink the Kool Aid. Join the cult of Squeak. So I will help you. Excellent. Pip starts digging a hole. Tekka, help him! If you need him. any of this damned <laughs> spice, you let me know. Otherwise, I will just watch. <laughs> but Tekka doesn't hear Pip, so it has to be through Talix, right? Well, you just see Pip is now yeah, digging he... a hole. <laughs> like, I'm not with really his sure hands. He... Here, Talix will help him dig, at least. And, uh... Um, Pip is going to, like, start... Uh, scraping a groove uh, in the earth beneath them, like making these concentric circles and uh, lines that are drawn between them. And uh, inside these circles, he's going to pull out of his backpack a number of uh, these herbs uh, that he's gathered, and he starts placing them inside the circle. And he's going to ritual cast uh, his spell, Find Familiar, and all of the, like, uh, a fire begins to start right in the center of the, of the circle. Uh, this green flickering flame that uh, lights up with a little bit of some aromatic smoke. And the fire expands throughout the, the, this, like, moat, uh, lighting up each of the herbs until it creates this full uh, circle of green fire. And then... Talix, you hear in your mind, Pip says, Now! Do it now! Chant! Tekka, you want to say Squeak-Ostrox? I see. squeak rocks squeak rocks No one else is doing <laughs> You just hear, I'd join you if I could. <laughs> It's just Tekka. Yep. <laughs> for for eleven minutes, you hear Tekka saying "squeak." <laughs> this is the lamest satanic ritual ever. <laughs> Pip is just doing like some humming. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and the the green just fire in the center of the circle hand. it grows larger and larger until you hear you hear this big <laughs> as it lights up with this green light and you hear yes <laughs> <laughs> yes i've returned thank you my servants <laughs> <coughs> shit <it's> so smoky <coughs> 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 ah, thank you how was the beach <laughs> He's a little wet, uh, actually. You can see he's like wiping it off and uh, getting dry. And it's just like pretty good. <laughs> um, uh. Okay. That was right, interesting. Well, uh, vacation uh, time is over. Uh, we have pissed off an entire religion. <laughs> yeah, sort of. <laughs> That's just a Tuesday for me. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Okay, well, 
he's back, Pip. This Pip. I thought I'd say this, but I'm glad you're back. Yeah, does Pip look like his dog just returned home? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Squeak, in imp form, uh, looks up at Pip, and, and you see his bones crack and his skin turns to gelatin as he turns back into a rat, and Pip gratefully scoops him up and, and goes over to Tekka and just uh, gives him a smile and pat on the back. And you hear Pip's voice out of Squeak say, Thank you so much. There is nothing to speak of. I am happy you are back, Squeak. All right, where to? Uh, to the sea. <laughs> My favorite. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. So we started far earlier today because um, some of you couldn't stay for the entirety of it. Um, you have to go. I can do like another forty-five minutes. Next. Yeah, that's uh, that's about what I'm good with too. All right. Um, you're traveling to this <clears throat> river. If that's, yeah, wherever the port would be, either... The, well, the port is here, uh, but... Yeah, we don't want to... We Like, right now, we're just north of Aria, right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we might go west and then just head... And then go down? Whichever way we need to get to the closest port. If this is the okay. only one, then yeah, yeah so there are there are no additional kind ports of roundabout. Uh, uh, along All the right. way. So, yeah, it's... we just go kind of roundabout then. Okay. Is this free top? And here. Uh, we might. <laughs> oh my god. Depending on what, uh, yeah. Okay. Depending on what options are available and affordable. You start traveling west, um, until the sun, about to just over an hour later, uh, begins to rise. Um, you don't really have any more just energy in you, um, You could push yourselves, or you could just uh, um, bunker down uh, for the morning, I suppose. Maybe we should go until we find a place that seems remote and that we'd be able to hide in. Are there any caves up on top of a mountain? <laughs> <laughs> By any chance. I have a survival check, all of you. All right. <laughs> Come on, convenient cave. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I was born surviving. <laughs> uh, Talix, with your knowledge of the area, um, you've actually the aria heard area. the aria area <laughs> <laughs> um you've actually heard of like uh, um a series of small caves that face towards the sea um and you just conveniently you actually have to go slightly bit uh, just a tiny bit more north uh, compared to like where you drew your line it's more like it's gonna be a circle like this um to actually get there and they're all uh, very small, but like it's sufficient enough protection from the elements um, that it would make for for a great place uh, uh, to spend a night in. And they also happen to be facing away from the colony, uh, which is going to work very well for you guys. Are there okay. any monsters in this cave? Roll a perception Don't worry check. about that in the morning. Oh, 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 but... <laughs> oh we're not going to look for monsters until morning. <laughs> I'm exhausted. <laughs> Let's just light a fire. And if they're monsters, the let fire. them take us. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather it be the monsters than the Jade Council. Yeah. Squeak um, is back. Let's trust our lives to his vigilance. Hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna need to make mm, a campsite a map for, for the night. But look! Talix's tent is here! Hey! Oh, hey. 
Is it reflective nice. enough? Is there what? Yeah. Well, isn't it supposed to be like, like chrome? Well, like I can't a mirror up polish? that reflectiveness. Okay, okay, okay. Specularity. Here you go. Yeah. 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 Thank you. That actually looks great. Oh, <laughs> don't unlock it. It's uh, ah. It's too late. No. No. Now it's on hydraulics. <laughs> Oh. Uh, comfortably fits too, so, uh, or uncomfortably could fit more, I suppose. <laughs> wanna... I that call this cave good. tree. <laughs> 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 it's all the same to you, I prefer to be the little spoon. <laughs> <laughs> spoon defects. I know you wouldn't expect that from a six foot six, three hundred year old frog, but I, I am full of surprises. <laughs> uh, I'll just draw a line down the middle of the tent here and do just like. <clears throat> you could also just sleep point to face. Uh, yeah. There's more space. I mean, I guess that could work too. <laughs> okay. Uh, is there anything you guys are doing during night? Sleep. Yeah. Yes. Are you yeah, taking very turns tired. Uh, to keep watch? No, nope, not tired. Tekka has Jamuel, right? Uh, yeah, Tekka has, has Jamuel. Yeah. Okay. Do you need to do something with him? Uh, uh, I mean, I think it might be like okay to check in with him. Right. Given the um, massive development. <laughs> I do always the... go on the assumption that like every in-game night you guys check on him, and that's how like you're yeah. reading his updates. Mm, okay. um, I feel like it's kind of pertinent because of the whole uh, Talix revealing his thing was to bring this seed in with Jamuel plant. It seems pretty Jamuel relevant. Mm -hmm. Maybe Jamuel knew of this. Okay, uh, you open the book. What do you ask him? You tell me a bedtime story, Jamil. <laughs> About uh, your secret quest to... Uh, uh, forcefully inject your religion into a brand new continent and overwrite their own history for the sake of your own. <laughs> Who told you? I like tales of <laughs> religious conquest before bed. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me of your crusades. <laughs> hey, but uh, no, seriously, did you know of this? Oh. Oh, now here comes color text. Now. <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I hate it here. <laughs> Winky smile. <laughs> 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 this is just now he feels like now the book feels like a halfling <laughs> no <laughs> I don't even know how to use this text tool so whatever <laughs> I have instantly regretted this. <laughs> no! Well done. Well done. Oink, oink. <laughs> Thank you for that. How do you do this text? I'm not tabletop simulator educated. <laughs> you just click and write. You click and type. <clears throat> it's the seventh to tool to from the top in the top left. <clears throat> the one it's called text. Oh, I think I hit all the tools. <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> oh. 
Okay. Oh god. What are you guys <laughs> doing to my Jamuel? You did. You did this. <laughs> 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 oh you had the perfect example of what humanity would do when they get emojis. <laughs> and you didn't learn from the mistakes. <laughs> Yeah, we know that you regret the emoji thing, but how does Daniel <laughs> feel about the... Oh my goodness. <laughs> yep, this is the- this is- this is what hell looks like. <laughs> everyone- everyone in the party has brought out their chins and is just doodling all over Daniel's <laughs> Coming up with, oh yeah, hey, this new novel invention of emojis. <laughs> 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 okay, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> you, you <laughs> okay. Just kidding. Oh, it didn't oh. work. Oh. <laughs> so, it seems like we don't have any more questions. <laughs> <laughs> we reached. Oh my god. We have reached the shit posting part of the session. <laughs> oh, this no. is what happens when the party gets sleep deprived. <laughs> I'm actually surprised how well that looks. I like know. It. Yeah, I really didn't expect it to work. <laughs> okay. I love Jamil. I want to take care of him now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so fun effects. Talking to Jamil. <laughs> <laughs> you have indeed caused a lot of issues. <laughs> But, uh, no, if you do not know it, it's fine, guys. Perhaps it jogged a memory, I don't know. Very bad. Right. It is a matter of perspective. If uh, the gods are on our side, I suppose we can feel justified, but if the gods are on our side and the council is not, uh, that is cause for alarm. It is likely the worst case scenario. to plant it and deciding to plant it are two very different things. I don't think that loss of memory is a good thing. We just had a whole expedition about this. Is that it? Uh, Matt? <coughs> yep. Alright. 
Close the book and give it back to Tech, and <laughs> position himself uh, in the tent. And, you know the offer for Spoon is still there if you wish, and then goes to sleep. <clears throat> Before sleep. Oh, what? <gasps> uh, but it looks at the rock. Uh, oh, okay. Has it changed? Yes. <laughs> Why? The colors have changed. <laughs> it runs over to Tech. Just wildly gesticulates at this rock. What is wrong with your rock? Mm. <laughs> hmm. Do you think it changes with light or heat? Hmm. Do we have a campfire set up? In the cave? If we'd like. Talos didn't want to go through the effort, he just wanted to go to sleep. But <laughs> I prefer uh, we not smoke ourselves out. Well, if you put it at the mouth, it's probably fine, but it's also just more time and we, you know, marched until past sunrise, so. Could just spoon for warmth. All right. <laughs> Pip shakes his head, and then uh, he has an idea. He's going to command Squeak, now that he's back, to watch the rock all night and see if it changes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All night? Yes. <laughs> Welcome hey, back. Welcome back to the world of the hell. Rock. <laughs> <laughs> Vacation's over, you're in hell now. <laughs> Welcome they have, to the they have telepathic layer. conversations, you know, so Pip says in, in Squeak's mind, I am commanding you to watch this rock all night. Do not avert your gaze, no matter what happens. Don't even blink. And he must follow my commands. <laughs> <laughs> I am bound to serve you. <laughs> ah, okay, where do you place the rock? Uh, I guess like, well, it has to be somewhere where the colors can be seen, so I, somewhere where there is some natural light. So I guess closer okay. to the opening, yeah. Alright, uh, we'll get to that tomorrow. <laughs> Okay. Um, as for the night, um, you're all exhausted. Uh, you fall asleep rather quickly. Um, well, I don't know. Uh, Talix, are you, are you able to just uh, fall asleep after today's events? <sighs> hmm. Good point. I'm not sure. What do you think? Oh, oh. Uh, Bone. Who took out their accordion? Uh, <laughs> and he's obviously very exhausted from everything. But it's also quite scary. I don't know. We'll make it 50 50. How about that? Less than 10, he stays awake. Okay, he's awake. He can't get to sleep. Okay. Um, and Talix says uh, you're, uh, despite uh, your attempts to fall asleep, uh, um, you just lie on your bed while wide awake. Um, it, um, you uh, end up noticing uh, a few, a few hours uh, after the group has reached. Uh, Hmm. After the group has uh, reached the cave, uh, that Pontifex 
stops snoring uh, at some point in the night. And you're like, you think that perhaps this could be like a good moment to finally fall back <laughs> asleep, but um, um, you you see him just like lift up a hand uh, briefly, like uh, just up into the air while he's uh, sleeping on his back, and it just goes back down. Eventually resumes snoring. Hmm. Uh, Pontifex. <clears throat> Can't reach the book. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, Pontifex. Too high. Yeah. In your sleep, uh, after nightmares about the book being just out of your reach, <laughs> uh, there comes a moment when you find yourself among the immense roots of Vakanath. Looking up at their branches, you can sense the presence of the goat. Um, you don't really see him, and uh, when he speaks, you don't really hear him either. Uh, it's more like you perceive him through senses other than those of your waking body, uh, sort of like transcending your normal immortal form. Uh, you feel his stare upon you, and it's humbling, um, to some degree a little scary, too. Uh, and I am only, I the DM, I'm only a human being, so I'm going to use words for this. <laughs> uh, but imagine it as more like you understand the direct and most pure meaning of what's being said. Okay? Mm, okay, like, exactly, <laughs> I understand. Perfect. Emotional <laughs> bleating. Okay, um, would you, would you like this, uh, um, to be done privately? Uh, uh, is it something that needs to be private? I kind of leave that to your judgment. If it's not something that doesn't need to be private, I think it's more fun if people can, can okay. be in on it. It does not need to be private. Yeah. Go so, uh, the goat tells you, I bring you two messages tonight. One message comes from Vakanath and is meant for Talix. He cannot hear her voice, so by her will, you and I will both act as messengers. Tell him the following. The council must not know about the seed. They must not take it. The second message is from me. It is meant for Talix. It is meant for you. It is meant for every mortal. I want you all to remember this. Only you get to decide your own destiny. Us gods may have our own plans, and we may try from time to time to push you into a certain direction, but it is imperative that your choices remain your own. You are not our puppets. You must choose. You must make mistakes. You must grow. By the time Pontifex wakes up, um, before everybody else, like he tends to usually do, uh, he's the first one up generally, but uh, with you know, you've all shifted your sleep schedule uh, further into the day, so it's like about noon. Uh, by the time Pontifex wakes up, um, everybody else, that's including Talix, uh, uh, is asleep. Yeesh. Uh, can't he talk to Talix? He's more in tune with the tree than I am. range uh, and Pontifex is gonna start like uh, I think he's just gonna start like making notes and making like uh, I don't know what else to call it, to call it like a conspiracy theory chart <laughs> uh, with bits of string uh, like, drawing, tied like, between names of subjects and connecting dots with lines and all of that stuff and he he's trying to to yeah connect some dots <laughs> yeah and like 
uh, like dreams tend to be also like over time it's it's going to fade. So I imagine a Pontifex just like jolts right. down everything and remembers like first thing. Um, he remembers Vacanath italics. Do not let the council find the seed and <laughs> gods to us. Your choices are yours to make, not ours to dictate. That's how he words it. So I writes it down. That's how Matt write his notes. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, and that, that eventually the. Well. Eventually, the rest of you will will rouse. Uh, um, Talix sleeping far beyond everybody else. Uh, once there's like the moment when he finally uh, passes out. <coughs> yeah. uh, I think <clears throat> I think Talix would get up and just not get a full night's sleep and just be exhausted tomorrow that works yeah he slept a little bit but not sufficiently once the sunlight like gets intense he'll yeah maybe only slept like four hours or so mm -hmm. he's not an elf he can't he can't <laughs> do those hours right Could okay. you even give me that, Dad? The one useful thing I could have gotten from you? <laughs> really? Couldn't even get what? Trance. Oh! <laughs> I couldn't even get that, Dad. <laughs> Alright. Uh, count down one of your rations. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've got plenty of rations many, if anyone needs them. How many rations worth of Uplu did we get? Uh, a I think bag we just counted full. it for one. One day. Oh, okay. <clears throat> yeah, we we already counted that, I believe. Gotcha. Oh, I should let me look at uh, this again. Oh, where? Oh, there we there we are. Uh, okay. So based on where you are, um. Mm hmm You proceed, um, <clears throat> again, this is somewhat uh, uh, downward, uh, down the hills, as you're approaching the, uh, the sea, the shoreline. Uh, you're headed straight west, trying to get to, not the river that uh, Arya is built on, but the one after it. Um, it's a... <clears throat> Simple enough uh, uh, journey where the terrain is uh, not particularly difficult to navigate. Uh, um, you start walking just a little bit past the noon uh, and uh, um, roughly around uh, four hours later, uh, in the middle of the afternoon, towards the, the end of the afternoon, um, <clears throat> is when you spot... Ah, voice, I got this. Uh, is when you spot uh, in the distance, you're not quite at the river yet, um, but you can see people further down, downhill from where you are. Uh, they're all gathered um, in this small area. Um, it's uh, it's open. Uh, it's an open field still. Uh, it's like at the bottom of a hill. Uh, so you can see pretty clearly, uh, it's a group of about uh, maybe five to six people. Um, all gathered together and kind of walking around and seemingly in the middle of something that from this distance you can't uh, uh, quite uh, tell. Um, do you want to avoid them? Uh, I'd assume so, right? Yeah, pr probably. I mean, can we even tell like what sort of people they are? Um. All right. From this, this actually, roll a persuasion check, all of you. Uh, persuasion perception <laughs> check, all of you. <laughs> persuade <laughs> persuade them to persuade not the not the in question. <laughs> persuade me. While we're rolling, rock. Yeah. <laughs> oh. No. Rock. Oh, oh, oh Rest guys. In peace ratio. Thanks. Advantage, your inspiration. Oh my wow. god. Hey! 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 Hey!
Yeah, it's yeah. Nice yeah, it does. Add it, add it to the uh... counter. Uh, no rock for Pip, I'm sorry. The, oh, wait, these did you say, say perception, nasty. right? Yes. Oh, okay, then it's oh. actually 23. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, that's your charisma. <laughs> Minus two. Yeah, I think Pip was asking about how the rock changed. Yeah. Oh, we can't that's stare right. At it all night. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, he stared at it the whole <laughs> no, night. No rock for Pip. So I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's gone. I forgot. <laughs> Squeak, Squeak stole it. it. Squeak. This is what he was after all along. <laughs> he tosses it down. He all and says it hasn't changed. <laughs> um. Yeah. But uh, by the time and and people will be able to see this with his own eyes. Uh, by the time the uh, he goes back to grab the rock. Uh, um, it has, the colors have not changed. Mm. And Squeak testifies as much. Squeak is grumpy today. All right. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah he is. <coughs> he 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 was brought back from hell just for this. <laughs> to the to the real hell. <laughs> okay. Uh as for the checks, Brooks, <clears throat> Brooke, you're able to see that uh, um, none of those people are armed. Um, they have no weapons, they have no armor, and uh, um, they are gathered in and around uh, what seems to be the remains of uh, an old town. There's just the ruins. Uh, you can kind of see the, uh, the perimeter of where some buildings used to be, but... Uh, um, most of the walls are just entirely gone. Uh, you can see where a well used to be, which is now collapsed. Um, and you can see that based on the tools that they have with them, um, and what they seem to be busy doing, it seems like there is some kind of, uh, um, of research being conducted here. Um, it feels like... Uh, you even see one person in the process of digging up something. Um, and as you observe them for a little bit, one of them then eventually gets to this person and also helps him dig. Um, so that's that's the, that's the kind of judgment you can make of these people. Well, from what I can see, I think there's a 50% chance that if we don't avoid them, they will talk to us. So, at least they don't seem armed and just doing their business. What sort of business is that? I mean, I don't know. There are a lot of runes and they're looking around and digging. So my guess would be research. Archaeologists. Sorry, what? Did Maybe. someone say research? Oh, God. <laughs> no, we <laughs> should... No. <laughs> we should see. Are you sure? They, oh, they, they they wouldn't be... Yeah. No, they'd have to be good people. I emphatically you know, agree. Trustworthy. <laughs> what if they're researching something for the council? Well, there's a good chance of that, but they wouldn't be enforcers. There is no such thing as a malicious researcher. <laughs> huh. Well, up to you. <laughs> Let's get a little bit closer. I want to see what they're doing. Okay. All right, we're creeping up. Yeah, you get the you get a little bit closer until until the rest of the party can also see what Brooke saw. And Brooke, now that you're closer, you see uh, one of those people um, taking taking off his hat and wiping the the sweat off his forehead, um, and you can see that that person is an elf. And with just a little bit more um, cautious watching uh, from a distance, eventually, it seems like all of them are elves. Oh. Okay. Not the council. Nope. But they're elves. I'm Good. Similarly from similar loan. My people. <coughs> uh, my, my people. <laughs> <laughs> what? My what? people. <laughs> One of us lives there. So my people? <laughs> <laughs> this is where I live. I'm a citizen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
It's my, my people. <laughs> Not yours, my people. <laughs> I have no other people to call my people. Let me have this one. <laughs> Everyone turns to look at Tekka expectedly. <laughs> Not your people. <laughs> <laughs> My people. <laughs> okay, okay, they're elves and archaeologists. All signs point to yes. <laughs> uh, Alright, let's go. All right, Wait, yeah. They don't oh. know. Tell us, runs. Oh, oh. runs where? <laughs> Which way? To the elves. Oh. <laughs> You're not going to get the upper hand on me! <laughs> My people! <laughs> goes running at a pace of 20. <sighs> Pip just walks there with Tekka. <laughs> if Tekka's going. Yeah, Tekka's going, but at, at a slow pace. <laughs> Rush. Yeah, um, it's just walking. Either. Okay. Um... As you're beginning to run towards them, uh, some of them spot you, and they begin gathering their tools, and uh, <laughs> and and like they're they're packing up. Uh, they're hiding some things. They're like tossing some tools behind uh, uh, some uh, of the, the the ruins of, of the ruins. Uh, Talos one of is them call out in Elvish. Wait, wait! I'm a friend. I'm looking for someone. <laughs> And then they they, scream ahead. they they pause, they look at each other. Um, one of them steps up, uh, um, this uh, elf woman. Uh, um, where is it? Here it is. Um, and looks briefly at the group for a few seconds, and then in elf in elvish she says, "Are you? Are you with? Are you with Arya?" Oh. <laughs> Uh, no, no. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, guys, we're good. <laughs> and, like, they they start getting back the things that they were hiding. Um, and, yeah, she, she, she approaches a little bit and lets you uh, catch your breath and says, Hi, um, don't let them know that we're still here. They've told us to leave many times already, but, uh... I have work must be done. Hold on. Uh, is it like time for us to stop? Uh, how's everyone doing? I, I wasn't sure if you're like, is this going to be another big can of worms? To <laughs> work through? Well, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> is it? Uh, but yeah, no, I mean, we were, um, I think Dennis is, yeah, right at the end of his time. Yeah. Mm hmm. Okay. Then... Yeah, we can end it here. I missed the very end. What happened? Did they kill us? <laughs> yeah. Are we rolling they stole, initiative? They stole no. the they, Only they upon effects if... for said he was an elf, and they got really upset about it, and they killed him. <laughs> oh, man. Careful, this is a woman. Yeah. Gotta f Oh, no. Oh, my <laughs> people. Basically, they said, you're not, you're not cops, right? And we said, no, we cool. Oh, okay. <laughs> Then they, got, then they got their uh, their paraphernalia back out. So back we it. don't have to fight a swarm of like, archaeologists. <laughs> Alex flashed his ear, <laughs> and they're like, "Oh yeah, we're cool." <laughs> okay, then we can end the session here. Hey. Alrighty. Ah, oh, all right. I was very worried about today because I knew there was a fifty. 50 chance that you we wouldn't died. go in the city. Uh, but I had to prepare for kind of both. Made it seem like we really should. Yeah, well, I had to prepare for something that wasn't going to happen, apparently. Like, it, it really seemed like it. there was not a good way for us to go into the city. Like, it would have just been bad news. At least especially this. after the dream. Alex and Pontifex at least shouldn't go. Yeah. Look at all this work! <laughs> oh, it's so I mean, beautiful. We'll be back. Yeah. I don't know if we will. <laughs> Even and the music for it. <laughs> oh, it's fine. Um, that's... It's, uh... Um, I, I that's what happens with sandboxes. <laughs> oh, is I this just... the Jamiel statue? 
Yeah. I bet it's a Jamuel statue. Look at this young man. I mean, <laughs> I bet. I, I wanted to see if, like, Jamuel would, like, say something if he saw the statue. He's you can like, always take him back. <laughs> so I turn no, around. No, we're not going back there again. <laughs> I'll get teleported eventually. <laughs> Ooh. <clears throat> Are you planning on playing next Sunday? Or this Sunday? Who is missing next this I coming Sunday? Might be. Cause if it's just one person, then yeah. That we, we should play. Well, that's not quite fair. I mean, you guys you guys waited for me. Did we? <laughs> all but, we all but like one, at least one without you? One time. One time. <laughs> yeah, I think we've played a session without, yeah, Dennis, myself, and <laughs> Jason once no, each. No, no, I, I, I joined the session late. I was here for every session. I know that we had I every intention of ignoring you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> But wow. uh, I know that we've played a full session without me there and one without Jason. <laughs> yeah. And one without Austin. But I'm down for whatever oh, yeah, we want right. to do. Uh, though I... This coming Sunday is fine. And the 19th is fine. Uh, the 26th, probably not. Oh, no. 26th yeah. is Christmas break. Yeah. Uh, oh, and sure also... the 19th. Um, I guess I we'll keep see. like a huge advance warning. Uh, January twenty third is a Sunday, and that's my birthday, so I will very likely not be here. Fair, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we would happen to be playing a day of, so I'll uh, I'll put something in Discord just to be like Matt's not gonna be here for this day. <laughs> we're to play. All right. Oh yeah, January and February. Well. The whole semester is going to be a very busy one for me, but January and February are going to be busy. I mean, I'll still be able to not play like, most Sundays, I think. But... Not like most other months. <laughs> how, how old are you turning, Matt? <coughs> I don't want to talk about it. Oh, well, it's added to my calendar anyway. No, it's not a big <laughs> one yet. I'm turning 29. Ah. Oh. oh man! <coughs> Another. Yeah. So you're you were born on 1993. Correct. 92. Yeah. 93. <coughs> when you're still the baby. <coughs> I guess I'm born in January. Oh, Jason. Oh yeah, I forgot about you. We're talking about January. Because you're oh, not one when you're born. <laughs> For some reason, I saw the 23rd of December, and I was like, what the. <laughs> I would have turned 29 this year when I turned 28. <laughs> yeah. No, this is my last year of, of being in my 20s, and then I have to be an adult. But Gross. You were... No, adulthood has started already a long while ago. No, it hasn't. Uh. No, it hasn't. <laughs> Not till I'm 30. I still get to say I'm in my 20s. Okay. My girlfriend's shaming me about it. Um. Oh, wait. Uh, Jason, we have a thing on Sunday, right? What? Oh, my goodness. <coughs> uh, do we have a thing on Sunday? Are we doing you a thing? the presidential ball at the White House. How did you forget? <laughs> uh, I, <coughs> my memory is escape. <coughs> uh, cookies. <coughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. All right, we need to yeah, call the session. <laughs> I need to, oh my I need to <laughs> Don't take die. care of my husband. Uh, we're going to talk about this more on uh. Discord. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, thank you for being uh, here today. I'm glad we got to have yeah, a session. Yeah, thanks for the session. That was a deep one. Yeah, that's pretty yeah, crazy. Pretty good. Have fun with the recap there, uh, Austin. I mean, ultimately, you guys just talked. This is very simple to recap. This is serious stuff. <laughs> talking has gone very different <laughs> in the past. Yeah, <laughs> now we're talking is actually being productive and not getting a shot. Mm -hmm. Getting me shot. Well, I there mean, were no notes involved. I'm, I'm not sure stupid. about productive. <laughs> my talking might be productive. <laughs> 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 
But I'm pretty sure that Telex has been talking about going to Aria <coughs> since the for, start of the yes, campaign. Yes, for a really yeah, long time. I know, literally labeled on the map as Telex's home church. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, to add to the cruelty, are you still streaming? Yes, I can stop it. Bye, okay. everyone. Bye, this bye. Mother oh, yeah, okay. So, <laughs> bye, everyone. <laughs>